biscuits it is. I feel like Cheddar Bay Biscuits would, is like a sex move or something. Is there? <laughs> they is should it, make it I'm a sure, sex I'm move. I'm sure we could come up with something. Is there Ch- really a place called Cheddar Bay? <laughs> no. No, I think they're Bay Biscuits. Would the Cheddar they're Bay... They're Bay Biscuits with Cheddar in them. Would the Cheddar Bay Biscuits sex move involve actual Cheddar? Because that's where my mind's going. I think... Well, so when Cheddar Bay Biscuits, when they're fresh, when you like pull them apart, doesn't the Cheddar kind of like... Is it almost like Guys, this is making goo? me hungry. Gooey almost because it's melted. Is it gooed? So yeah, if I would think Cheddar Bay biscuits. Wait. The sex movie would be something that like gooey. Maybe. No. Wait, have we started the podcast? It I would don't be know. like, okay. what if you took some cheese and a hair dryer? Guys, <laughs> guys, The Witcher comes out next week, and I shit you not, I have Wednesday and Thursday off, and fuck you. That's all you're gonna do. My, in, my mom's like, I'm gonna be in town on Wednesday. <laughs> Let's get together and eat lunch. You're like, watch no, sorry, movie. Mom, I have to work. Oh, oh my God. I don't know. I, I want to lie, but it sounds so horrible. <laughs> I told uh, her, I don't know. You know, my schedule. Want to work stand up your mom kinda... to go play The Witcher 3? Hey, man. Well, I, I mean, know. those review scores are really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of our most anticipated games of the year, and it's also... <gasps> I don't get a lot of days off. Only He's got two. a good point. Cheddar isn't just a cheese and a village in England. It's also a process by which they make cheddar cheese. Maybe we can work with that on the sex move thing, right? Because it's like squeezing Crispy, out I a lot of I believe we were talking about Brad's mom. <laughs> you know, can we go back to talking about Brad's mom now? Uh, is what, this the like show? Cheddar Bay Biscuit? Maybe we'll go to Red Lobster. Oh, can we, can we <laughs> See how it ties it all together. Can yeah. we record a dinner time at Red Lobster? At Red Lobster. We can. Um, all right. Is this the show? I don't know. Are we here? I mean, we're here. We're talking <clears throat> about things, and we're recording. People are commenting on stuff. This feels like a show to me. So this is the show. I'm back. My yeah. name's Nick Henderson. What's up, Nick? What's up, on my tongue? Really? Is this... Are you? I'm okay. That's Brad. <laughs> Brad has a tongue problem this week. Hello. Nolan Hedstrom is joining us. How's it going, everybody? And, of course, Christopher Guthridge. Hey, what's up? Who did a great job of hosting duty last week. Hey, thanks. No problem. I was I was under a lot of pressure, but I think I pulled it off. Uh, yeah. Well, while you were under a lot of pressure in here, <laughs> I was circling the sky for about two hours above Austin, Texas. <laughs> I was thinking in of a, something funny. In a thunderstorm. In a thunderstorm. Um, like you paid a really big woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, what? <laughs> <laughs> to do what? I, I don't. I'm sorry. Are you still on Cheddar Bay biscuits? Brad, I under think... a lot of pressure, he was. I don't. I don't Is know. it? <laughs> <laughs> is this one of those episodes where Brad is like kind of high on something no, and we no, can't no. quite figure it out? I did just take some Advil. That would do nothing. I took three. Took a bunch of that would do days. nothing. I took four. That would still do nothing. Yeah. It would take quite Where's a Where's the, the fine line between loopy and dead with Advil? Well, there's a fine line between <laughs> dead and liver damage. Yeah. No. Not so much with loopy. It's not. Advil, I just want, Advil doesn't get you high. I just want my headache to go away. That just takes time. But wait a minute. If it fucks up his liver, couldn't he get blood toxicity, one of the side effects of which is hallucinations? No. Is right. any of that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just I, made I am going to sit forward a little bit. Oh, is it the sofa? What are we talking about this week, guys? Well, we have a lot to talk about. In the So, we're going to talk about a lot of Star Wars games, I guess. Are we? In the first well, time? Well, I was going to talk about two out of the four games of Star have Wars to? games. I was going to talk about Outcast, but I changed my mind because I played a lot more of this other game, and I want to talk about that. Wait, why didn't you tell me that when I was making assets for this? You no. turd. Anyways, okay, so we'll talk about one Star Wars game. But the real meat of the podcast, I would imagine, would probably be in the back half because we're gonna be talking about. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna be talking about how That's God just decided to take to give everything to me, and then just at the same time he just took just a big cheddar bay biscuit, take it on all him. away from me, you and got, give it back to Brad. You got a new Assassin's Creed game to be Go excited fuck about. Yourself. <laughs> Literally, I felt like I was on top of the world. I feel like God had just taken everything from Brad and given me everything that I wanted, and then the next week they just flipped the, flipped the tables. Yep. It just gave it all back to Brad, and now yep. I'm now I'm bitter. So we'll be talking about that in the second seg- <laughs> second segment. Um, before we get started, though, I do want to mention one thing. This weekend, if you watched Brad a petit, uh, this, a petit, a petit this week, uh, he mentioned that on Saturday we're going to be doing a broadcast event, a 24 hour broadcast event in support of Operation Supply Drop, which is a charity that go that uh, supports um, military both overseas. Um, active, active, and inactive. 
Reserve Military. So we're going to be doing a 24-hour broadcast in support of Operation Supply Drop from 12 p.m. on Saturday to 12 p.m. on Sunday. Yep. And uh, the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to be splitting it into about into four six-hour chunks. Um, and we kind of have we have three out of the four of those chunks kind of hammered out. Um, the first one, which is going to be from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday, uh, Chris Davis and myself are going to be doing something that we tried to do last year, uh, but we didn't. We failed. So we're going to be doing a Halo 2 co-op uh, dual stream session uh, on the broadcast, which should be fun. I haven't played Halo 2 since it came out. I know Chris Davis has probably played it like 50 times since then. Um, and then, what? What did he say? I couldn't He hear. said really. Uh, Indignantly. <laughs> as if it wasn't true. Oh, he typed really. Yes, yes, <laughs> really. Um, and then from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m., Nolan's going to be taking over and doing some uh, community broadcasting, which yeah. may or may not entail GTA Gary's Mod 5? Yeah, GTA 5? So, well, that's uh, one of the options. I mean, GTA 5, Gary's Mod games, you know, TTT, Prop Hunt, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, so I would recommend being around for that. We'll, be, uh, you could, we'll somehow be pulling people from the community into it and taking part in the game, so that should be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And then from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Are we telling them, or should we keep that a secret? Well, you gotta well, we have to make a decision like you right can now. Say who's involved? I mean, don't we want to build excitement? It is. It is definitely appropriate to the time that we're starting. It's starting at midnight, and we've picked a very good game that is should be played at midnight. Let's just say, Crispy's probably not gonna be able to play this game. Uh, uh, Let's just. It's, it's, he won't be able to. <laughs> I'll I'll give it the old college try though for the troops. Okay. Um, are we really not telling them? I mean, you can tell them if you want. Oh. Are we in the right frame of mind for this discussion? <laughs> we don't even know which one we're going to do, though. My vote... Okay, we're going to be playing Fatal Frame. Oh. <gasps> no, just, sorry. Wait, took the wind out of my sails. Sorry. We're we'll playing <laughs> Fatal Frame from uh, 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., and I think we're going to be doing... I don't know. I My vote, personally, would be for Fatal Frame 2. I think that's the best in the series. Yeah, but uh, I play that one on the feed. I think we should do... Uh, Haven't you played all of them twice on the feed? No, no, no. Uh, I think we should do like three or four because those have been seen very. I've never played four. Four would be a good one. Yeah, but that, isn't that the one, one. We, have, we don't we have to jump through a lot of hoops to play well, that one? I mean, we'll, I'll, I'll see if I can figure this one out. We'll see if I can. We'll be out. playing a Fatal Frame game for six straight hours. Me, Brad, and Crispy. Crispy will be playing at some Crispy point. Crispy will be playing. We'll make him feel yeah, comfortable. Maybe yeah. for only about two or three minutes. No, he's gonna play for two hours. I'm probably just gonna get drunk. Oh, well, there's... Show well, up for, do it. from, from, from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., Crispy know. will be drunk. <laughs> so show up for that. And then I think we're going to have... Um, uh, I think George is going to be filling in that final slot because he's he is across the pond, and yep. it's a far more be um, day, reasonable man. time of day for him to be broadcasting. Well, 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. is not exactly... A... I think it's more of the 6 a.m. part. Yeah. Especially after we just went from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Yeah. I'd like to point out the necromancer is basically saying that I was right. What? Uh, Liver failure can cause loopiness. So, yeah. We've moved on That's from not that discussion. That it's a callback. So. That's not how <laughs> Anyways, that works. the point is this Saturday, which is May 16th and se or 16th to the 17th, this Saturday, Sunday, from 12 p.m. to 12 p.m., 24 hour broadcast in support of Operation Supply Drop. You can come watch us play games. For 24 hours, we'll be taking donations that are all going to be going towards Operation Supply Drop. You can show your support for the troops uh, and active and reserve military, and it should be fun. It's for a good cause, so come hang out and uh, even partake in a few games with us. Yeah, for the potentially troops. for the troops. So that should be fun. We'll put I'll post some more details on the front page of the site, and of course you can check the calendar uh, for any updates as well. But that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other Unvideo game related discussions we should have. You know what's crazy? Hmm. I found out that there's a dude who speed runs two games at the same time. It's like I think uh, Mega Man X yeah, and I Mega Man that. X Two with the same controller. He yeah. speed runs both games. What? What? Yeah. yeah. How do you even? By looking at, by knowing exactly what to do, yeah. in in both games that will lead you to success in both games. I mean, it's it's crazy. It it's sounds a crazy. It's a little silly. Um, but he can do it. That is silly. Um, I've always kind of wanted to, the, to do uh, that with the PS4 controller. 
to Matt, play a PS3 game. Did you listen to the, the the Skype call that we had, the Patreon Skype call we had there, uh, well, a couple weeks ago now, uh, where we were talking about potential games to play for our first uh, mini Project M series, and someone had, uh, had recommended us doing, um, oh, fuck, which Mega Man was it? Legends. Mega Legends. Man Legends. I wanted to. Do, I haven't had a chance to ask your opinion on that, Brad. Like, uh, well, we talked about it on the meeting. I've never when played when you were Legends. gone. Yeah, oh. I believe. Oh, I was gone, so I wasn't part of the meeting. So, nope. oh damn, I guess I'll ask you later then. Anyways, video games. Oh, well, I wanted uh, that. I just wanted to say that I'm pretty excited for Mad Max Fury Road. Oh yeah, shit. it's getting, it's getting, getting good. Good. really yeah. fucking good reviews. I just watched uh, Road Warrior the other day. I watched day. it the other day oh, too because because like I I had so I had pumped. tickets. To Fury Road, they were doing an advanced screening in, uh, in New Braunfels. Well, in Austin as well. In Austin, they actually had, uh, what's his face, uh, Miller. What's his first name? George. George right? Miller. George Miller. Yeah. yeah, they had him there. It was a panel uh, with Robert Rodriguez hosting it, huh. uh, doing a Q and A. Uh, but the problem was, it was during Joel's birthday, and I was like, eh, I'd rather go to Joel's birthday. Um, that was very nice of you. Huh. Yeah, uh, but uh, and that was also before I knew it was getting such high reviews. <laughs> Ninety six percent on Rotten Tomatoes across fifty two reviews. That's pretty Chris good. Davis. That's pretty fucking that good. Is and then I that just kind of got me pumped for it. So yeah, the other day I rewatched Road Warrior, and that's such a fucking good movie. I love that movie. Did we ever talk about Avengers on here? Uh, we did, but we, you hadn't we, we seen briefly it. Briefly mentioned it, but yeah, you hadn't seen it. Oh, that I point. liked it. It's good. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I heard the. Uh, I was reading a thing today think? that the original cut of that movie was like three hours and fifteen minutes. Mm. I want to see that. I mean, maybe when the <laughs> maybe when the Blu-ray comes out, Do you like might have Nick? some of that extra footage in it. Nick liked it. But he just doesn't like comedies that much. Wait, I don't uh, like comedies that much. Well, yeah, as much as you like, no, the dramas. comedy is like the one thing about the Avengers that I think was done really well. Could Hulk lift up the hammer? No. <laughs> yeah. They didn't show him try. No, I know, but... A lot of people lift it up. Yeah, the it, he has, like, in, infinite in, strength. In the series... I, I like in, that question about the in, elevator. In the existence That was of, a cool moment. Oh, no, we can't. Okay. And anyway. the existence of Thor, many people have lifted the yeah, hand. Yeah, it's I like, know, it's I know. always but, like... But it's because of, like, you know, whatever, like, pure-hearted people I mean, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, like, Captain, worthy people. Captain that, America. That would be, that'd be pretty fucking good, Chris Davis. Captain America. Chris Davis that. says uh, that Stan Lee should do a cameo as a janitor. And lift the hammer absentmindedly while he's cleaning. Just like pick it up and clean under it and put it back down. That would, that be... would have been really fucking good. I somebody I tweeted bet... that. Really? Yeah. Chris Davis, you copied Davis someone. Is stealing. That's not an original idea at all. <laughs> That's fine. Uh man, it's a good movie though. It's fun. It was. It was. Yeah, I enjoyed. Good it. Good fun movie. Yep. It was. I like that uh, that good Olsen twin. What? Olsen sister. Was she an Olsen twister sister? Yeah, it's Elizabeth Olsen. She's the what? younger sister to the Olsen twins. She's the Olsen sister. You're There's a third like. one? Yeah, she's the one that can actually act. Wait, which one? The Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch. That's an Olsen sibling. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, she's been she's yeah. been acting for a while now. I recommend yeah. the indie flick Marcy May Mar- Martha Marcy May Marlene. Yeah, that's a good one. <clears throat> she was in the old boy remake. Not as good as the original one, but still I pretty not good. Seen that. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, yep, there you go. What? Avengers Assemble number four, 2012. Hulk lifted the hammer. There you go. Aha! And Magneto. I feel like uh, that would have been well, way with And Red with... Hulk. See, <laughs> that's <laughs> Superman. That suddenly makes it far Wait, less Superman! Wait, what? Yeah. In JLA Avengers number four. That... Look, it's Superman with Mjolnir and uh, Cap All right, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> well, I'm going to be honest. The more Every time they add someone new that can lift the hammer, that becomes far less interesting. No, it's like it's Frog. like GameSpot giving Witcher 3 a 10. They've already given so many the tens at this point, right? The frog version of Thor lifted the hammer. What the fuck? There's a frog version of Thor? Yeah, his name's Throg. Oh, my God. <laughs> go ahead, Brad. I'm going to go ahead and let you take this Yell one. Yell at IGN. I didn't, I didn't make this up. Uh, well, we're t- we still haven't talked about a video game. No. Right? no, no go yeah. first. I'll go game? first. I've been playing a game that was gifted to me on my birthday by someone... Oh, I, shit. Happy birthday. I didn't recognize... I'm just kidding. I already... Well, thanks. So yeah. I did my yearly, hey, Brad, what's your birthday? I got to order plane tickets yeah. thing. Yeah. Thanks. That was still funny when that <laughs> happened. <laughs> um, That's what I'm going to do every year. Um, uh, it just works. Urban Hitman. Give to me a go- copy of a game that I have no idea how to say. Ex Ma- Anima? Ex Anima? Ex Anima? Ex Anima? That Ex-anima. doesn't sound like a word. Ex Anima? Ex Anima. Ex Anima? Put some lotion on it? Uh, yeah, Ex <laughs> I don't know. 
Eczema. Eczema. Urban Hitman gifted this to me. It's an early access game that just came out. And let's add it to the list of early access games that I don't really want to be playing because they're early access, but they're really good, so I'm going to play them anyways, and I'm frustrated because I just want the that's, game to come out. That's the worst feeling, and I've been getting more of it lately. Dude, I didn't even realize is... that uh, uh, the game that came out today, uh, Invisible Ink, yeah. was out yeah. early access. Yeah. And people, someone at Destructoid gave it Game of the Year last year? Wow. Yeah. Which that, is kind of like, yeah. I guess, our Crypt of the Necro dancer. Yeah. Right? Like, well, I knew it was going to deserve it this year anyway. But, so, like, I, I've been kind of falling into that rut as well, Brad, where it's like, you get so excited for an early access game because you know the game's going to be good. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to wait until it's out. But you you want to play it now. But then you play it, and it's like, shit, no, I should have waited. waited. I mean, that, that's what a lot of it, like... It's sort of like Exanima uh, sounds like a skin disease. I didn't want to... You know, Massive Chalice, you know, I had a really hard time waiting. And then same with thing with Darkest Dungeon and Subnautica. Subnautica and now yeah. this. This is a... Huh, this is kind of hard to explain. Uh, can we blow this up a little bit, Chris Davis? Uh, would that be possible? That's what she said. Because um, things are kind of little on this game. Not without restart. No, oh, restart. really? I think yeah. he... No, I, I, I mean... I mean, just on, on the screen. Like, yeah, just like multiply just, it. Just or, or just, just blow, uh, stretch out XSplit a little. Just more. Like right. when, you, when you right click on the video and you have the size of it, just be like, bigger. Well, we can see. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 well, you're no, right. no, no, no. no. Oh, you're, fine. Do you're, that. Fine. you're fine. People could see. Okay. We're good. We're good. We, we should have gone with the 50 inch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is a uh, kind of a, an exploratory dungeon, like a, like a RPG, I guess. But here's the twist: everything is based on physics. Yeah, yeah like yeah. like your movement, like your your the combat, everything is like super physicsy, like crazy super physicsy. So and, and I, I I I'm trying to think of like the name of a game I, I can like make analogous Quop? to this. But uh, well, not Quop. Uh, so you know how the combat in like Mountain Blade takes yeah. into account like the speed of your swing and the and the position of it. If you hit on the head and you're going really fast, you're gonna do like insane damage. Yeah. Like like it, it's kind of like that, but even more based in like crazy physics. And to you know how like Bushido Blade, a well aimed strike could like take out somebody like instantly. What about uh, it feels like that? But there's it, what an was actual. That, what was that combat game? The mil the medieval, the oh deadliest warrior. De not deadliest warrior. No, the, the other one. Uh, uh, no, I can't think of the name. Chivalry. 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 That's another one. It's, yeah, it's kind of like chivalry, but everything is physics like your movement is also physics not just your swing yeah uh so, so if you so build you up can, momentum it's yes. harder to so slow down you like, can fall over in uh, fact if you make a taller character it's easy for you to fall over if you trip over something did i see your character like trip over a rock or something yeah or? yeah <laughs> and you could do that in combat too but what makes it so exciting is the combat you can is, trip over a rock in combat feature but, but it's cool because like you could back over something and fall over uh, and they can like kind of hit you and <laughs> Like Face plant. So I'm kind of goofing around to show you like how silly the physics are, but what makes it exciting isn't so much the movement, but also um, also how stuff in your environment can kind of play into a combat given combat scenario. But it's it's really weird when it comes to actual combat because it's all about you know kind of the way you swing your weapon and whatnot. Um, so so this this mode right here. This is like the kind of a. This is very early access. This is mm. just kind of like roam this dungeon. It's permadeath. If if you die and it's really easy to die, um, you're done. Wait, but you, you say it's really easy to die, but what really kills easy to die? You? Enemies. Enemies. There are enemies here. Right. You'll see um. them, and I will fight them poorly. Um, <laughs> and but you know, like like for example, I forget who told me. Like Urban Hitman found out that it's a really good defensive tactic to like put a chair on your head because it keeps <laughs> enemies kind of away from you a little yeah which <laughs> why so how do you put a chair like on you your head dragging a hair onto your head chair onto your head and just dropping it there because or? it's like it's like this physics simulation yeah but it makes the so combat like, like, Sky, so fun like in Skyrim you could put a bucket over like a merchant's head and then steal shit because they couldn't see you yeah. can do that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's kind of like that you know Skyrim, it yeah. has these systems but but it plays into the fact that that it sucks that we're get, we're, we're not going to have audio because it's the kind of thing where you're like fumbling around, you're stumbling around, you're bumping into each other, you're like hitting walls with your with your weapon. But when you finally get a well timed like perfect swing, like, that, like the tip of your sword into their head, and they just fucking kill over, like it makes it so much more satisfying because you had to work for it, and because like it, there's this 
there's this really high skill ceiling. That that's what's made this game so addictive to me. It's because that I feel like that like you know you're like you're stumbling around like an idiot. But once you get good at this game, it is so satisfying. And I feel like I'm not even close to how you know like this crazy ass ceiling of of skill that you know I could probably find a YouTube video of someone who's like amazing at this game mm-hmm. or the developer doing just this amazing shit that once you understand like you've played the game and you realize how hard it is to do anything you know it's kind of like playing co-op and you can't even make the, that guy run for four feet but there's another dude who can like you know sword fight with him <laughs> I mean that's <laughs> yeah. what this game is like and remember that time Mike showed up to an event and ended up playing co-op for the first time and like beat it yeah. <laughs> well was, no he played co-op before yeah, he played it before that was oh, at the, he played clop right after that yeah that, that was at, in san marcus yeah. or whatever that uh, yeah. video game so, thing was so here's the crazy thing i'm gonna die here really soon because Good. because i have i have no weapon i have no armor uh, this is a this is an rpg so you're constantly finding loot you can even loot enemies everything you see in the world like you can like pretty much pick up and use as a weapon and it has stats and stuff i just have a, like a fucking chair leg or something and i'm gonna die because I'm really bad. This fight actually looks pretty intense. The, this it looks guy, like you're both drunk. So so that's what it looks like at first. But that's because I really am just kind of stumbling around. I have a shirt and a stick and I'm just desperately trying to survive. And this is like a zombie that's really kind of welling on me. So I'm going to die. But it doesn't matter because I've been playing this game a lot. But I have not been playing this mode. It's permanent. I feel like it's too punishing. And I, I, get, I, I, I feel like I'm not good enough at the way you play the game to actually get uh to be successful so i've been playing this arena mode which are these one-on-one battles where you're fighting just another person and it's like a fighting game they get harder and harder their equipment gets better and better and if you see which it's really hard to see because this game is dark and it's kind of little on the screen and we're far away but i got the 50 inch i'm in like full plate mail right now with the big ass badass like witcher looking sword and i'm fine i just went to the kind of the novice arena to um to kind of show off what it's like. like. practice? Or, uh, oh, not, okay. not practice. You're I, showing I, off. The thing is, every time you beat in a guy, you can kind of loot them and, and find which loot you like the, the best. And, you know, it's not like they're always wearing the better shit. Yeah. Uh, but I'll show you when, when I beat this guy. I think this guy, like, kind of how the inventory system works. It's There's no numbers or words in this game, really, I feel like. Like, everything is just sort of like... It, a representation in a physical space you just kind of drag it to your character to put it on them Mm -hmm. i mean you could see the stats if you double click but i'm saying there's no like inventory slots they're just kind of like floating out in space Mm. and you know your room is what you make of it um, as far as in, in your inventory goes um but what makes this really cool is because you know you you see yourself kind of getting better and like these guys that early on who are just kind of wrecking your shit you learn how to fight and how to dodge and it becomes really satisfying and i can't describe it and i I know it looks like like two drunk people fighting but i feel like this is what (laughs) it would be if if like two people in medieval armor we're fighting with giant fucking swords it doesn't look like it does in the witcher it doesn't look like it does in dark souls it would probably look like this yeah and 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 when you finally get in a good blow it's so fucking satisfying i've been reading a lot of the witcher books lately and this makes me think and they have like very descriptive sword fights in those games Mm -hmm. and like this is giving me such a satisfying like sword combat feeling that uh that um it's making me even more excited about The Witcher, but but I, I feel like, like I say in that that clip, I don't know if you saw that clip, that that was the most satisfying attack I've ever had in a game. Yeah. Like like that is no exaggeration. That it, it, it when you connect like a heavy hammer, which is so hard to swing around into somebody's head, and the AI is really good in this game. Now I want you to watch closely this next fight after I beat this guy. Like it it is, watch how watch how quick the fight goes, mm-hmm. because it is too. Very, very well timed strikes. You, you might have to strain your eyes a little bit. And I wish there were sound effects. I'm glad I brought my but it's that Bushido Blade kind of thing. But Bushido Blade was never based on something like physics. But like this game is. So when you when you and and, and the way it works is like it's like you kind of click and drag your mouse like across, and that that determines kind of how, you, know, you, how swing. you swing your yeah. sword. But you also lean into it. Like so, you're using the WASD to move around. But if you like step into like a swing, it'll do more damage. Like watch. Uh, it's after, actually after this can, guy. Can you do like uh, I've seen you do lots of swings. Can you do jabs? Can you just stab uh, them? So so well again. I, I mean, th- this is very early access. It just came out last week. Yeah. But they're um, they're adding stuff in like with patches like constantly. Like they're about to add shield bashes and kicks soon. I, I hear. That's but cool. right now you can just kind of like 
And again, your slashes are very physics based, so it's not like a certain type of slash. Mm -hmm. But there's also kind of like an overhead slash. And you'll see in this in this next fight after this, like how well timed it is and just how how quickly a dude goes down. Kind of like the idea of Bushido Blade, which Bushido Blade was always cool in concept, but it almost seemed kind of random as to when you would get those one hit kills. Yeah. But uh, here, wa wa watch out! Watch how quick this next battle goes. Uh -huh. Well timed overhead strike. Yeah. With a slash in her rate. face, she's dead. Yeah. Oh. She's dead. Oh my god. It, and, it, and it's such a satisfying feeling. I kind of did an overhead strike, hit her in the head, and me kind of pulling my sword back. The physics kind of threw her forward, and as she was falling forward, and I you just, just whoosh across just her face. Just slashed her face dead. open. Nice. Dead. And so, so you, you oh, there will be fights, cool. especially in the expert, because I'm working on expert, uh, the expert ladder or whatever of enemies where I'm, I'm in full plate i'm fighting a dude in full plate a battle can last like 10 minutes wow or a battle can last like seconds it's yeah. crazy mm -hmm. and, and, and it's funny to see like well this is why i guess they wore heavy armor in the middle ages because yeah. like like a sword doesn't do much against somebody in full plate nope but but that that one of the reasons I wanted to fight these squishier guys in novice is just so you can see how fast like a guy can go down, because it doesn't happen that fast necessarily, mm -hmm. um, if you know what you're doing a full plate. But yeah, there's kind of like parrying and like a you know defensive strikes, which are it's pretty simple. It's intuitive. You you hover your mouse cur cursor like kind of in like on the enemy yeah. and that'll determine the point at which you're kind of like strafing and moving around him and as long as you're not attacking and you're kind of pointing the mouse cursor at the direction that his attack is, is going he'll automatically like move his sword there and pair and the animations like with that stuff are really fucking good so why why does this dungeon have halogen bulbs in it i don't know <laughs> there's also like weapons on the wall leave it to no like one um I mean, you know, the so so I don't think this is like Mountain Blade. I think there's this is like gonna be fantasy and stuff. Like there is a magic. You can't see the meters or anything. Yeah. But uh, there is a magic meter that just is implemented into the. I mean, there's no magic in the game yet, but supposedly there will be. So it's just gonna be this very punishing, realistically feeling, you know, physics based uh, action RPG. And I think it's gonna be like kind of a surprising hit. I I, I highly recommend that. That you, Nolan, and Crispy, like, go onto my account and just try this game out. Go yeah. into the arena, though, just to see how it feels, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about mm. instantly. Cool. It'll, it'll, you'll feel like a klutz at first, but when you get I good agree. at Metropolis, it, it's going to be He says so... they need to add disembowelment to this game. Yeah, right? No, no. They don't Like, they just... absolutely need uh, dismemberment. And but, but I hope it's... You know, it maybe doesn't have any like specific like damage areas. Like he can't just like no, hit a guy in the leg and then he's like hobbling around. Well, or, like, no, there is off. damage areas in the sense that like the armor. Mm -hmm. Like when I got in full, like I didn't understand. Like there's like lay, there's so many layers of the armor you put on. Mm -hmm. Like I had a breastplate and then like like I had, a, I had a tunic right and I couldn't wear the belt with the tunic. But if I had just a breastplate, I could wear the belt. And I didn't really understand that. And each item has different stats. And it had like, it gives you this much defense against slashing, right? Yeah. And then I got this full plate armor. And all of a sudden, I couldn't wear a lot of these other layers with the full plate. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. But all these other like uh, things had defense against slashing. Like, I can't wear my van braces and stuff now. So does that mean that stuff doesn't stack? And then I realized that, like, all it like it's coverage. Yeah. yeah. But like since since this game is based in physics, at any point where the sword hits is taken into account like what layers of defense you have in literally physically spot. covering that specific right. mm -hmm. So so it so um, you know, I could wear like a very you know, thick breastplate that just covers this part of my torso, and that's super like defense. But like a strike at my neck or my waist, Jesus, like like <laughs> could does way more damage. Yeah. To the point now where where I you, you losing battles is now of just like kind of crushing damage or, or stamina based damage like uh -huh. like I don't die of blood loss anymore because I'm in full plate. Yeah. It's just me fighting other dudes in full plate and we're just welling on each other until we go down and it's hmm. fun and it's silly. But like I said, try this game out. Like this Warhammer is it's, so hard. It's to It's still use. a ways out, isn't it? Oh yeah, I mean it just launched an early access and it doesn't even seem like much of. I mean, oh. it, yeah, it doesn't even seem like much of a game. 
Like, like you can stumble and like, like I can't stress enough so, that that. So you know how like in boxing you watch the boxing match or whatever they're constantly like hugging each other. Yeah. You do that because the other guy you're tired and the other guy can't punch you. Yeah. yeah. And, and and if they have a long weapon in this game, the best place to be is just right to up in front. ram yourself up against them. Yeah. Because, you know, one, you can, like, knock him down. You can throw him off balance. But, like, he can't hit you yeah. when you're, like, in his face. So, oftentimes, I go for, like, two, like, fucking big-ass sword swings. And, like, like, I can't make a third. I'll just throw myself into the enemy. I'll throw myself into the enemy because that's the smartest place to be. And uh, I think it's a miracle that you haven't actually arms. hit your microphone. I know, you, I know. Brad's been over here actually swinging his arms like he's swinging a sword. <laughs> It, I, I can't tell you enough. Like, I really did not expect... I never even heard of this game. And and I did not expect to be playing it as much as I've done. But I've, I've played this game for, like, ten hours. Jesus Christ. <laughs> In two <laughs> sessions. It's really, really cool. Um, and I'll be playing more of it. And I, I just... You it's like the thing where I'm, just, I'm just waiting for the trickle of... Updates, and updates stuff. to come in slowly. You know, which yeah. you know they're happening. You know, I, I noticed little things from that time I played it on Sunday to the time I played it today. When does it does a game remain in early access all the way up till launch? No. Well, I mean, yeah. If you have early access, usually you can play it up until they launch a final version. Yeah. Interesting. Which will usually be like the bigger update that has all the final stuff in it. Interesting. Okay. Uh. Well, what else do we have today? So you don't want to talk about Jedi Outcast at all? Um, I'm gonna talk oh, about my what? Star Wars I game. We were gonna... I threw, that's the only thing I was listening oh, to. Oh, well, I'll briefly mention my thoughts on it while he's talking about it. Well, Although, you didn't even get to the lightsaber Wait, did stuff. you play Outcast? Well, I played Outcast, and then I played Academy. Okay. A little bit of each. Okay. I played through both of them before. Well, he put the overlay oh, okay. for Outcast, so let's talk about Out Outcast. Outcast. Jedi Outcast. I don't know. I didn't play Outcast. <laughs> Jedi Outcast was Dark Forces 3. Yes. Jedi Knight 2. Yes. Jedi yeah. Outcast. And what? And yeah. th this man gave up before you ever got to the lightsaber. Because and the force it, I didn't realize how fucking far away it was. It was so. Well, like, yeah. uh, so, so the original like Dark game, Forces was a pure shooter, but I, I forgot that that game can be kind of punishing. Like when you're just using guns. Oh, you don't, you, you don't, you don't remember punishing. Punishing <laughs> like, is the snipers on that one fucking level. Narshana. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, with Jesus the fucking Christ. like instant snipes. Oh my god! And it's they just horrible. like vaporize. Do we have you, footage like, of this game? Ugh. No, well, because no. I, I wasn't planning on talking about it, really. Oh. Uh, but I didn't know Crispy hmm. was going to bring it up. Well, it's he the only thing I up. played besides Bloodborne this last week, so. Oh. I mean, I could just not talk about it or anything. Well, uh, have, no, you no, played, no. have you played Republic Commando? Because that's well, the game. Yeah. about Jedi Academy. I mean, it's oh. been a long time, but yeah. Um, yeah, so. Wait, hold on. Cause, <laughs> well, no, but we have footage for Republic Commando, so don't go right into it. I was going to talk about Jedi Outcast. Oh, yeah. Outcast and Academy. Outcast is one of those old. It, it's kind of like the end of that like it's, old school era first person shooter. I feel like it's in between. I'm the, gonna say the I, level design is really like I forgot how like kind of cool the level design. No, was it's in cool, that game. but it's not as cool. It's in between. I was heartbroken because all week long I was trying to get Dark Forces Two Jedi Knight working, mm -hmm. and I couldn't get it working. So I settled for Outcast. And Outcast, he's right. It does have really cool level design, but it is it is in that era where it was kind of it was it was Half Life and Halo, mm -hmm. which which, which is are, are where kind of shooters started to change. But that series came from Dark Forces and Dark Forces Two, which very much still had that kind of Doom, yeah. you know, Quake level design or whatnot. But but. I could tell that this started to be more streamlined, linear, less labyrinthine, which some people like, some people don't like. It, Wait, so uh, Jedi Outcast quite... is a shooter? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you oh, get yeah. your lightsaber. It's a, first, it's a Dark Forces game. It's a first-person shooter. I never played Dark Forces. Yeah, and then oh, you wait, get... Wait, didn't play... Dark Forces was like the old like Star Wars Doom. Didn't I basically? start playing Jedi... You started playing Dark Forces <laughs> 1 during 1995. Oh, yeah. That was 96. pretty good. 96 yeah. months. Yeah. No, yeah. and this one's great. Like, the... The basic story of the game is uh, Kyle Katarn, he went through Jedi Knight, did the whole Jedi thing, and then just kind of like swore it all off after the, the incident at the Valley of the Jedi and went back to being a smuggler. He had Force powers and a lightsaber, and he said, nope, I'm done. Like, severed his connection to the Force and stopped being a well, Jedi. Well, I mean, that's all you need. And, uh, yeah. Force powers and a lightsaber. Yeah. And, and he, decided, he decided he didn't want any of it. So he goes back to being a smuggler working for the New Republic, and he stum basically stumbles onto a plot of the like the Imperial Remnant to create an army of shadow troopers who are like these 
it, it's basically a suit. It, it's kind of like, um, do you remember Dark Troopers from Dark Forces? Mm-hmm. They were like these giant robot stormtroopers. They're doing that again, but now they have force powers. What? It's like a suit, like a stealth suit that gives the wearer f- like artificial force powers. And they were going to make a whole army of these stormtroopers that could use lightsabers and force powers. And he has to stop them. And there's a bad guy who looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex who is... There's a T-Rex Jedi. Yeah, who's you using... You love him. God. Yeah. Well, he's a Sith. But yeah. <laughs> a Sith, sorry. Uh, and he's using the power of the Valley of the Jedi to turn people into like these kind of fake... Is he really a T-Rex? Yes. He looks like a T Rex, yes. <laughs> but with, with a T Rex man, when in with Star Wars, is there a T Rex Jedi? T Rex man. There was Trandoshan. Yeah, Trandoshan. He's not. A, he's not a Trandoshan, but he. Trash it's, okay. it's the same basic kind of concept. Yeah. Um, All like, right. Uh, you can have an army of of Trandoshans in a uh, yeah. Star Wars Galaxy or Conquest. There you go. Um, Mountain Blade. It's pretty cool though. Like the first couple levels are just you infiltrating. Well, actually, most of the levels are you infiltrating Imperial strongholds. Dude, I would, like, you say it's kind of streamlined, but, like, coming from modern super streamlined shooters and going back even just that far, like... No, you're right. It there's is a this, lot going on in It is in just in between design, kind of game. But like, it's I was more, getting turned around a lot. It's more <laughs> Halo 1 and less Doom. Mm, yeah. Versus, like, That's the fair. first two Dark Forces games, which were very of the 90s era of level design, which is, I think, probably Jedi Knight is probably the pinnacle of that series in terms of level design. Yeah. But for the life of me, I couldn't get Jedi Knight running. But probably. then you go, like, I so I played a couple levels of that, and I was frustrated that I hadn't gotten to the part where he gets his lightsaber back. So I went to, like, Jedi Academy, and I played a little bit of that. And Jedi Academy that one's is, a... is fun. It's really cool. Yeah. But I feel like it's even more... It's disjointed, yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. It's, it's, what game did I start playing last year? It wasn't, I mean, not during 1996 month. There was another Star Wars game that where I was playing as an actual Oh, Jedi. no, I think it was Outcast. It was Outcast. Was that Outcast? Yeah, it was. Yeah, or was it Academy? That, that yeah, game it might have been the same Wait, did you start? Hang on. Did you start with a lightsaber? Or did so. you get a lightsaber like six hours I think into he played it? Academy. Because it might have been Academy. I, okay, I think I had a... I think you played Academy. Jedi Academy is the one that starts with <clears throat> you literally going to the Jedi Academy. They say you make your you're a Jedi, Jedi, and then they give you like a galaxy map, and you can pick which missions you want to go do. That's the one I. That's started. Jedi Academy. Which, okay, that's that's what, in the same series as Dark Forces. Yes. That is the sequel to Jedi Outcast. It's that's not Dark even Forces really a Dark for... Forces game anymore. I mean, K- Kyle it's kind Katarn of a it's is, kind of a Jedi outcast. You like talk to Kyle Katarn. He's like your he, master. He, yeah, he's he's in the game, but yeah, it's essentially Dark Forces Four. Um, but that one, you never really use guns. I mean, they give them to you. Yeah, they give you that option. Like before any mission, you can select. They give it to you. Good. Two guns and a grenade. Or but something. But that one sucks because I think the level design is bad, and they're all disjointed. They're just yeah. like these random missions. Yeah. Uh, at least Jedi Outcast still has that, like you're following a story. Had like a narrative arc. Too, narrative yeah. arc and level to levels are connected in a way that makes sense. You know, it's, but it's cool. But you know, it's I like getting lost and I like finding real secrets. And there's no fucking real secrets in Outcast. It's all just oh, you went down this hallway, and you probably shouldn't have come down this hallway. Oh, you found a secret. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. So, or like you find like a, a thin ledge on like the outside of a building, and if you walk around it, you'll find There's like a secret area with back to tanks and shield generators. Yeah, like, yeah. it's cool. It, like it's good. It is. I good. miss. I think I've missed out on a whole slew of probably yeah. interesting Star Wars games. No, yeah, but see that those games they did do console ports of Academy and I think Outcast. Yes, they mm-hmm. did. But but those are really bad ports, dude. The Jedi Outcast was the first game that I ever like modded. I got I got really into like downloading mods and shit for that game when I was playing multiplayer. I played that for years. And, and that the ver- shit was crazy. In the, the PlayStation version of of Dark Forces, which you played, is a really bad version of that game. Which that's the one I finished back in the day. But I was really enjoying Dark when I, when I played Dark Forces during ninety six months. It's a great fucking game. Um, but is. speaking of Star Wars games that are kind of like Halo, I played Republic Commando. Oh. I didn't even know what this game was. What? I had I've I thought I've you played heard? this game no, before, dude. So this was a good choice. You yeah. volunteered. I, yep. I got a, I got a message from Brad while I was at Disney World. Like you're playing Jedi Outcast or I mean Republic Commando on Friday, and I was like, oh, okay. I have no idea what this That's is. Weird. The only thing I had ever seen of that game, I'd seen the, I'd seen the box on the shelf a million times when Holy I worked shit. at the store. Uh, but I've never, I never touched the game. That's weird, though, that you would have kind of like. I feel like there's a little it's bit of weird hype around this game. Yeah. To play that, yeah. 
Yeah, when that when that came out, it well, was no, like... that's even better. I assumed that you had like played through this game before. No, I had never touched. I it. picked it because. Well, this is also *Phantom Menace*. I know, and but, I, but and this I, game, I, there was some hype behind this game. Sure, but like I literally felt I, there's a lot the whole the whole *Star Wars*. This is like John, a, the whole Star Wars thing in general. I just kind of dropped after uh, probably well, after *Attack of the Clones*. I just that's, like, that's started enough, yeah. losing interest. Um, so this was my first time playing it, and I jumped in. Not only did I not realize this was like. I mean, this is this, like the tone of this game. Like, I actually played this game and was like pretty surprised by how bro, well. Ha- I mean, yeah, it's pretty, it is pretty. Bro. By the way, this console bro. port. Every time it does this auto save, like the whole the game freezes. Oh, is this for, like, a source engine game? <laughs> that would make sense. It's possible. I don't know, but um, so <laughs> this game is uh, squad based. Even well, it's a single player. Is there multiplayer in this? Where you can uh, play, where other was, players can control the other squad members. I think there was, but it, it doesn't work anymore. Oh, no, there was not co-op, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, no, I wasn't sure. I mean, I it, oh, it was, yeah, it was like a versus. So this plays a lot, this this plays and feels a lot like Halo in that you know, it kept its squad base, so I have... Also uh, very much inspired by kind of Metroid Prime as well. Yeah, the, yeah. there was a few people that popped in the chat while I was yeah. playing were like, is he playing Metroid Prime? And then all of a sudden there's a Stormtrooper, and they're like, oh. <laughs> um, so... This, I was enjoying this game quite a bit. Like it's straight up, it's a straight up shooter. Like it, the mechanics worked very well. The fucking the 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 hit um, detection on the enemies is really exciting. Like you can do cool shit like blow up bridges and, and like. I don't know. I was never expecting anything like this out of out of a Star, Star Wars, Wars game. Yeah, the game has totally kind of a cult following because yeah. of it. Oh, I see why. I mean, I don't know why I never touched it. I. It, it just really kind of surprised me. What, what I really like about it, the squad mechanics, because usually I, I see a game like this and I kind of, I don't get turned off by it because I, I like the the idea of controlling more than one character at once, but a lot of times those mechanics are fi- are fairly convoluted. Mm-hmm. Like in Jericho, the game you finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, shut up, Brad. <laughs> but like, no, but when I think of like squad based, I think of more like Rainbow Six or something where it's like, it has squad-based <laughs> mechanics and whatnot, but it's also really convoluted and not very user-friendly. This is, like, super simple. It's like, you, if there's something that your squad teammates can interact with, you point your cursor at it, you press a button, and they will go, go up to it, and you can press it again to cancel it. You can hold down a button to, to uh, pull up a wheel and give them commands. But it's all super streamlined and super, super um, easy to use. And, and when you're not using that, it's just a straight-up, like, Fun first-person shooter, a la Halo. And how mm-hmm. cool is it that you have a laser windshield wiper? You do. Yeah, you do have yeah. like every once in a while you shoot like a like a, a Geonosian and like their bug viscera, blood, their viscera would fly up under your under your uh, your helmet, and then all of a sudden little windshield wiper comes on. I don't know. Dude. You can have an army of Geonosians. I, and, uh, so oh you might. I'm, the, I was recording like this that? footage and I was. I like that modular gun that they have where they can just like swap out a barrel and like, yeah, oh, so it's I ended up using this gun for the most part. But instead of collecting different guns, yeah. you're mo- usually collecting modular enhancements to that one gun. So you can cre- create, you can pick up like a sniper enhancement. Um, but I was mostly using just the, the machine machine gun fire most of the time. Um, but it's it, as the game went on, you spent a lot of time um, strategically placing your squad mates around the battlefield by, you know, having them take cover behind a rock, or you can even tell them to take, um, to focus their fire on one particular enemy, um, or provide cover, or even search and destroy. They give you visor, uh, I just kind of accidentally turned that on a moment ago, but you have these, like, oh, there's my windshield wiper. Uh, but you can turn on these visor settings, so if you're in low light, you can, you, you can see better. Um, but I mean, it's just, it's kind of surprising. It's, it's a pretty straightforward first-person shooter, but it was surprisingly. Um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. It was just deeper than what I was expecting. So. Well, I mean, I don't know when this game came it. out, there wasn't a lot. I mean, I'm surprised. There's a lot of shooters, I'm surprised but... this is post uh, episode yeah, one right. because the tone is totally different. Yeah. Like this is like like this was a pretty, like you said, broy game, but it was like it's darker. It's they have more attitude than what I would expect for. No Jeff. And no Jedi. Yeah, at no least Jedi. not that I've seen. Um, <laughs> this, yeah, this, I, came out, um, this came out after, like, Bounty Hunter did, didn't it? I think before Bounty Hunter. Or it came out around the same time I remember as Bounty, Bounty Hunter. Hunter being on, like, PS2. Yeah. Oh, wait, what is, this is original Xbox. Oh, yeah, and oh, yeah. Chris Davis pointed this out. This is the only Star Wars game 
that he had that he can remember. And I now that I think about it, I don't I can't think of another game that doesn't have an opening title scroll like the classic Star Wars oh, yeah. scroll. It just the game just starts. Yeah, which I mean, is kind of strange. That's never a bad thing. Did did uh did you ever play Star Wars Bounty Hunter? No, we've played, played that. that during. There like, are a game lot nights. of Star. Like I used to be a huge, huge, huge Star Wars fan, but there's anything post like 2001 I just didn't touch. A lot of people really like Bounty Hunter too, which is weird because you're Jango Fett, which is <laughs> so lame. It was the closest thing to being Boba Fett, though. Guys, it's true. I don't mean to like make you like sad or anything because like and there's don't. a Star Wars Renaissance and we're all excited about these new movies, yeah. but like there's rumors that there might be a movie kind of about Boba Fett. There is. Okay, which it's, is it's cool, right? Except, films. like, you remember, like, Boba Fett's sad because Samuel L. Jackson, like, cut off his dad's head. That happened. That's real. That's not going away. Well, they don't have to get into dude. that. They have dude. to! That no, was, that was like, his if Batman know, motivation. If it's not, if it's, if it's just a story about, like, Jane, or, <laughs> About Boba Fett being Boba Fett, like it doesn't have to get into his fucking origin okay, story. Okay. Honestly, but but that is his. Does Batman have to do his origin story? No, but it always fucking comes up. Yeah, one thing that I've one thing that I've kind of gleaned from seeing how Disney has been handling a lot of this is that like they kept Episode One, Two, and Three as canon because they kind of have to because it's an official movie. But outside of outside of like just acknowledging that that's canon. I feel like they're trying to avoid that as much as possible. Okay. I'm just saying, Mace Windu happened, and they didn't take that Mace away. Mace Windu happened, but there's a lot of stuff you could do with Boba Fett that has nothing to do with his origin. Fair enough. But that is his origin. He didn't have an origin, really, until that movie came <laughs> yeah, along. That, 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 and there were other stories involving okay. Boba Fett. Episode Tales was that, from was the that Bounty two or three? That was uh, two, right? That was that episode two, two, yeah. two, like, made his origin story. Yeah, yeah. and we didn't want it. <laughs> we didn't want his origin story, and they gave it to us. But, but like, Tales, uh, Tales of the Bounty Hunters uh, was one of my favorite Star Wars books back in the day. And that includes not only Boba Fett, but other bounty hunters. And it never touches anything about who he was as a person. Uh, there is yeah. no cool book. Only Mace Windu. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Dude, I don't Lord. know. The, the Republic Commando tie-in novels are pretty cool. Dude, I, one thing, like, I don't think I'm going to go, I don't, I, I probably won't they, continue playing this. Because I have so much stuff, yeah. like current stuff on my plate. But like one thing, this playing this did for me is made me go like, I would this would be a cool game to get a sequel to, like yeah. a modern sequel, mm-hmm. like just like Battlefront, like a modern day version of Republic Commando could be really cool. Because they have there's a lot of foundation, like there's a lot of foundational stuff here that is just really cool. Just like Chandos. Maybe things. don't do it. Yeah, it's set in the prequel times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was like the thing is they have the battle droids. They have. Um, How about just a stormtrooper game? Yeah, That'd be cool, right? Just Fucking a regular storm old stormtroopers. One of them can be the dude who can't breathe very well with the helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I enjoyed Star Wars Week. And I'm glad Pocop got in some uh, Battlefront 2 there at the end, because I know people have been asking for it. Um, but yeah. I, uh, I enjoyed what I played of Mountain I hope Blade. Ba- I hope Battlefront Outcast isn't, a, and, isn't a fucking mess. What? I hope the new Battlefront's not a fucking mess. Well, I really hope not. But you know what? You know what? I'm like Battlefront's cool. I'm excited to see what that is. It's essentially a new battlefield game and those have been... I'm excited to see what that is. But I'm really, 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 really interested to find out what Visceral's working on. Because they have Amy Hennig and mm-hmm. it's Visceral who mm-hmm. did Dead Space and they're making a fucking Star Wars game. Yep. And they that's are. exciting. Could be. <sighs> I'm sure it will. Anyways, what else do we have? Uh Nolan played something, I'm sure. Oh, no. Oh, he played, uh, played Rebel something. Commando. What was oh, Rebel game? Galaxy. <laughs> Rebel yeah. Galaxy. That's, that's Galaxy. a hard title to remember. I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess so. Which is like, which we played at PAX, PAX South. PAX South, yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. Oh, yeah, that was a PAX South. Yep. That's right. And that's that's where I learned about it. Uh, and I, if y'all recall, if you go back and listen to PAX South cast, I was super fucking excited about it. And the other day, we got an email... Uh, and yeah, we did do an interview with, um, what's his name, Nolan? I had it. Travis James Jamerson. His name yeah, is Travis Tra- Baldry. Baldry? Yeah. Is it really Baldry? Yeah. I'm just reading it off the screen. He Travis Baldry. Okay. I remember. Uh, okay. I, I, I follow him on Twitter now. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, he, he, he developed Torchlight. These guys also Tor- made Torchlight. another game. That's... Torchlight. No, no, no. Um, this studio made another game that's kind of cool. Wait, real quick. 
there's some confusion in chat about what I said about Amy Hennig. Amy Hennig is working with Visceral on a Star Wars game. Visceral. Yeah. On a single player Star Wars game. Battlefront Different does not game. Battlefront does not have a single player campaign. That has nothing to do with Amy Correct. Hennig. Moving right. on, Just moving on to Rebel that. Galaxy. So for those that don't know, the best way to describe Rebel Galaxy would be Space Firefly Space. meets Cowboy Bebop meets You're saying No, you don't get to pick no, both. Go ahead, go you ahead. pick one. Meets You don't get to mix the two. Star Wars meets Star Trek. Assassin's Creed Assassin's 4. Creed 4 Black Flag. Yeah. In space. Wait, space. wait, why, why Firefly and you just said a couple of amazing things that are hard to. <laughs> yeah, you can to. you can say Firefly or you can say Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. It's not both of them. Sure. You know, most of us here love Firefly. Yes, most of us. Yeah, because you hate it. And <laughs> Cowboy Bebop, we all love. So tell us how this is like. It. That's that's the vibe I get from it. So yeah. especially yeah. one of the one of the biggest things that I've noticed. And so we played this at Pack South. And I got this experience, what you're seeing right here. This is the experience I got. I couldn't hear shit. We had a big convention hall. We were just looking at it. Oh, pretty. like literally Ooh, right now, the experience we're having, where yes. we can't hear anything. But the sound and the music, god damn. Is it kind of westerny? Yes. Ah. So it's so what happens is you're exploring space, and it's like acoustic guitar. And like it's just like fucking like Bastion kind of that kind of like that's that, that oh. quiet smooth and then fucking battle. Boy, starts. now he's bringing up Bastion. Battle starts and it turns into like an electric guitar, like almost like more rock than western. And the fucking music picks us up. Like there's oh my god. So this is this is actually one of my first battles, and I'm kind of I'm very sloppy. I, I have trouble understanding what's going on exactly. I, this is like me 20 minutes into playing the game. There's a lot of systems that you have to learn. Um, for example, I have this like deflector shield that I didn't I didn't use for like the first forty minutes of me playing the game, uh, and how, essentially how that works is whenever you in engage it, you take no damage at all. Period. That's just how it works. Shields. But when you use it, you can't use your weapons, and so you do have turrets on your ship that will automatically fire if you're near enemies. They'll just start firing on their own. They aren't the most accurate, but you know they will damage enemies. Um, and as soon as you engage that shield, you can't fire anymore, and those turrets turn off until you disengage the shield. Which later on, like right now, if I would use that shield, I'd avoid all the damage I'm taking from this guy. But you couldn't. But fire. my shields are. You, you, if you look on that circle around the the galaxy map, there are there's a blue one, uh, a white circle, and then like the galaxy map. So the blue is like my shields. And as long as those are holding, I take no damage. So if if those fail, then you have my hull, and that will start taking damage. And if once that fails, then so I... So you actually have to get through layers. Yes. And the same with the enemies. Same with the enemies. And you can see it on uh, the little red icon above them. Hoo-hoo! Oh, my God. That looks oh, it's, satisfying. It's fucking satisfying it's, as hell. It's basically a watered-down version of Star Trek Online. I have never played Star Trek Online, so I guess so. Uh, but if you saw right there, I, had a, I have a tractor beam equipped on my ship. So if there's a, ever anything, like that guy had some materials on him, so when I destroyed him, those materials were left in space, and I was able to use my tractor beam to pull it in. Everything that Nolan has said so far is, sounds very exciting. No, God, honestly, it's so fucking good. But and honestly, so, what sold me was that huge fucking explosion you just caused. These guys are little fighters, and so they're much quicker. Uh, you can only move in a 2D plane. Like everything, like this is space. It's three D, but you're moving on a flat plane, which is why it seems, which is why it kind of feels like Assassin's Creed Four Black. Plane. Yes, but these guys, these little fighters, they can go up and over and under you and stuff like that. But they're a little bit weaker. So so far, I've only ever fought like two or three ships at a time. Uh, there's one time you'll see it later in this footage that uh, I I'm I'm war I'm in warp, so I'm going really fast to a destination. And if you ever uh, are in warp and you come across too many ships or debris or whatever, your, com your computer automatically pulls you out of warp because it's dangerous to be going that fast because yeah. you'll hit something. I mean, I can, you can run into an asteroid and blow up your ship. Uh, so it's dangerous. So it'll pull you out of warp. And so I got pulled out of warp. And there was like a so because someone was like a distress call or something. I'm a, right? Fuck this guy. Yeah, fuck this guy. Fuck this I guy. I can see him like that. What? what? Really I'm happen. just saying, you're not actually going fast. Your destination is coming towards you fast. Anyway, continue. And so, uh, so anyway, I get pulled. I get pulled out of uh, out of warp. <laughs> what the? Fuck? And all of a sudden, I see like an enemy ship, and he's like, "I got you now, guy." And it turns out it's not an enemy ship. It's like six. 
And so I'm like, oh, ho, ho, and I just turn my shift the other way and re-engage my warp and just get the fuck out. Because there's no way I'm fighting all those guys. So I have a question. What's up? Is this game pretty much a build your ship and fight things? Or is this like an open <laughs> world explore exploration game? Or... Yes and yes and no and more. So, what? so yeah. So I have the basic ship. There's more ships you can get. Um, and then also, I think uh, the, I have some footage of it, but it's really far into this uh, footage. Um, you can go and you can buy all types of uh, different types of turrets, uh, missile systems. We actually have to purchase missiles. You can't just, it's not like a weapon and, oh, now I have missiles. No, you have to buy missiles if you want to use them. Oh, um, then you have different types of shields. So you can you waste missiles is what you're telling me. Yeah, you can. Uh, different uh, energy levels, uh, your engines, you, all of that, it's customizable. You have to buy it. Uh, new warp drive that makes it go faster, things that reach out, all these different components to your ship. This is me, uh, I think I was looking at the, um, the mission map. Uh, there's like available missions and you can go to a new system. This is the news and in the news you can see what's going on in the galaxy. Like, oh, there's a shipment of this being delivered from this system to this system. Maybe I'm going to go hijack that ship and steal their shit. Like you can go blow up the sh like so the news like kind of gives you or like maybe there's like a you know there's this mining facility that's booming right now. Maybe I want to go there and mine minerals so I can get them and sell them on the market. And, and so uh, w when we talked to um, uh, Travis, Travis Baldry, yes Baldry at Pack South from Kincaid, West Virginia. Yep, uh, he 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 described <laughs> it a little more. So I've only played the game for a little over an hour, so I haven't. Um, gotten to some of the stuff he's talked about but like you know maybe there's like a famine going on on some planet and they're being delivered supplies to help and so i can go and hijack that ship so this planet doesn't get their yeah. supplies Don't of food an asshole. and you then can take them to the planet and be like and, i'm a hero and then sell them at a higher price yeah. to the planet like you can you can there's there's a, there's a whole trade commodity with uh uh items and their certain values and stuff and you can like you hoard a bunch of like any like this one item maybe and you just hoard it you get all of it and that drives the price up supply and demand people won't need this now because you have it all and then you sell it at a jacked up price so you can kind of you can play this game however you want you can be just like a, a joe schmo uh, oh this guy's gonna give me a mission i'm gonna go and do it but you can be a pirate you can be a good guy you can kind of decide what you want to do and, you know when you see like the alliance ships like the cops you can attack them if you want to you for can, some reason yeah you can do whatever you want <laughs> And it's just like... Very space simmy. Yeah, yeah, very, very space yeah. simmy. I mean, you don't have to worry about gas or fuel or anything like that. Huh. But but I will say, just the, the fucking moment when you, when I turn away from the space station and I engage my warp, and you just you engage it and it kind of does this zoom in and this slow down, like... And then it's just... You fuck, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it pretty soon here. I think this might be one of the ones times I was talking about when I was, uh, when I was flying and I encountered a bunch of enemy ships. Um... Because it, it'll even tell you, the computer's like, hey, by the way, there's a lot of enemies, maybe don't fight them. Uh, I, probably just because I'm still early on. Um, but, like, oh my god. So does Dude, it give you that same feeling of, like, the Millennium Falcon, like, doing the... Yeah, yeah no. Kind of thing? To oh, an extent. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. Yeah, it, to an extent. It doesn't... I mean, it, it is cool. It's a lot cooler than, say, how they handle warp travel in Star Trek Online. It doesn't look quite as cool as Eve Online, though. So, so That's this is really this cool. is me engaging my boosters, which can be used in combat or whatever, like to kind of get a, a edge up on enemies. It's a it's a quick boost you have that uses your sub light engines, uh, and if you use it too much, you have to kind of wait before it. Uh, so this is me zooming uh, about to go into sub light speed, bam, right there. Mm. And it's a really cool effect. And this, I, I think this is the time I was talking about when I was heading to my destination and I got interrupted by some enemies. And I realized there's a bunch of them. But right now, I think there's some, like, really, like, lucid and, like, like calm, like, yeah, this one, uh, you know, uh, acoustic guitar going on. And as soon as the enemy spot me, it ramps up into, like, an electric guitar getting fucking serious. And, like, and so I'm just, I turn and I get the fuck out of there because there's, like, five or six of them. So, okay. I was so not like, ready to handle that. This looks really cool. So, it, you know, when we're talking about it being a space sim, like, general flow of it is, you know, it kind of drops you into this world, and then you can kind of do whatever you want, right? There's no, like, story yeah. or anything. No, like so there's, there's a or... small, you're, small, small story. You're just, like, that, looking for your... Yeah, your, your aunt went missing, or she sent you a message, and you kind of follow that message to this place. Your aunt is missing, and she is somewhere in the galaxy. <laughs> so, be a pirate! Yeah, yeah pretty much. Go! Uh, and, and, uh, so it is randomly... The there's, world, like, NPCs and stuff. There, yeah, there are yeah. NPCs. So okay. the world's randomly generated. Uh, and everyone's gonna have like different sectors and when they start like the you saw the galaxy map yours is gonna be different from mine um, and uh, <laughs> what is this no man's sky 
Uh, so yeah, so when you go to any kind of like city or, or like trading outpost, there will be people there you can talk to. Uh, you can uh, there's like a bartender usually. He'll give you information. Uh, and when you come across ships, you can hail the ships, have a conversation with them. Maybe and they're, they're all like animated like aliens. Yeah, stuff, so right? it'll like zoom in on their face. Like I don't I don't do it in this footage, uh, but it will like zoom in on their face and it's like a conversation. Uh, I'm trying to give another game that does something similar to that. Star Control too. I've never played Star Control 2. Uh, but anyway, yeah, like Brad was saying, it's, it just like, zooms in on their face, and you have a conversation, and you just, uh, there's dialogue options, and you can be like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, or like, oh, yeah, go fuck yourself, and then combat starts. Are there, uh, is, is this game out yet? No. This no, is, this uh, is, still this like is early, uh, it's not early access, I don't think. This is a press build that, uh, yeah. that we got. So, but, is this, I mean, is like, this are we exact... coming up on release, or? Uh, sometime this year. Yeah, okay. But, is um, this the same build that we played at Pax Out? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I haven't found that out. I just know it's a press build. <laughs> all I knew we was can I, find out, I'm uh, sure. Yeah. All I knew was I got Rebel Galaxy, I booted it up, and I fucking lost track of time playing it because I had so much fun. The music is fucking great. It feels great fighting ships. Are there space shanties? Uh, no, there are not space shanties. Well, I mean, I think I asked the guy. Packs. You did, you did. Okay. So some of the some Look of the music uh, has uh, like actual lyrics to it. So I found out because I was tweeting with them. This is it's, all, it's like actually licensed music. It's not music they oh, wow. they uh, created for the game. Uh, because I was asking, I'm like, oh, yeah, this soundtrack's pretty cool. Maybe you can like like use some of it on our podcast. And he's like, oh, it's actually all licensed. And he gave me like a list of all the songs. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so I was like looking them up, and like apparently some of them have been used for like fucking Discovery Channel like shows. Uh, to <laughs> clarify, Biohunter said something, but he doesn't see anything Cowboy Bebop esque about this. Were you referring to the music? Predominantly? Uh, music is one of the, the yeah the bigger aspects of that. Which you may not be able to, to hear. Which yeah, well you can't hear the footage, the music. But it's, oh, well, it's Chris Davis just posted a link to the soundtrack. So. Well, there you go. Uh, so it's 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 Cowboy Bebop in the sense that you're uh, like a bounty hunter to an extent. Yeah. Uh, you, you can, you know, you, you uh, all of a sudden a bounty comes across on the board. Oh, three million dollars oh, for oh, killing this guy. Every time I see an explosion right? in this game, it just makes me want to play. Uh, it. Which is, if you've seen Cowboy Bebop, kind of one of the biggest things they do. They're bounty hunters. Um, and, and so that's one of, the, one of the things is, yeah, you can, when, he, when I go to a station, and I can look at the news board and I can see, like, oh, here's a mission. Like, someone's put a bounty on this guy's head. You can go off and kill them and get the bounty if you want to. Or maybe you can do something else. Maybe you can join them. Guys, remember Prey 2? <laughs> Why would you say that? God damn it, it could still exist. What? What makes you say that? We don't know. There's two Arcane Studios. Why would you say that? Why? It could happen. It could happen at the Bethesda conference. Near what? weeks away. Alright, well, you. I think we're going to go ahead and end this segment. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure we'll be talking more about this game in the future. Oh, definitely. Um, I'm definitely going to. I'll play more of this when I cast on Thursday. I'm probably going to try to play some before next week as well. Yeah. So we might even revisit it next week. Yeah. Um, but for now, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we have some big news to talk about. Mm -hmm. The entire second half of the show is dedicated to, you guessed it, Everything Assassin's Creed Syndicate. You yeah. Don't go anywhere. I'm so pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're, we're going to talk about Bloodstained. Uh, don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back in just a moment. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We are back. Dick wash. We have a lot of news to talk about this week. It's been a oh, news heavy oh, week. Oh, my, my mic stand's really wobbly. Oh. It's also very close. Oh dear. Close to me. Wait, so are we. Are, do you, mean do you need to fix it? Oh, I, thought like, you, I thought you did. No, you're like shake. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh well. Earthquake. And welcome back. <laughs> All right. Okay. Dick now wash. we're back. We're cut up. We're back, we're back, we're back, and we have, this has been actually a very heavy news week, so we have a lot of big news items to discuss. Yep. I would like to quickly remind everybody, as we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, uh, this Saturday, May 16th and 17th, um, from 12 p.m. to 12 p.m., so 24 hours, yep. on 4pp.tv, uh, we're going to be doing a 24-hour uh, broadcast for in support of Operation Supply Drop. It's a charity um, that supports, that provides... Gaming, gaming themed support to military, both active and in the reserve. Um, so it's a good cause. 
So come hang out. We're going to be doing things like uh, we're, we're going to be doing a dual stream cast of Halo 2, me and Crispy, or sorry, me and Chris Davis. Uh, mm. Some community mm. gaming going on with things like, uh, 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 help me out here, Nolan. Gary's Mod games. <laughs> Gary's Mod, <laughs> uh, GTA 5, things like that. And of course, and then at 12, uh, from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., we'll be doing Fatal, a Fatal Frame, Frame broadcast. So it should be fun. Uh, come hang out and uh, potentially donate some money to a good good cause. It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but we have other stuff to discuss this week. A lot of big stuff. I'm going to save the big one for last. Assassin's Creed. Maybe. Assassin's Creed. Um, you have a hook for this time. I, I, this, is, Dude. It's, this has become one of those things where Why not? as big a fan of Assassin's Creed... I, as I am, I can't get excited about you it. You meet a new one with skepticism instead of excitement now, don't you? I've they've been doing that beaten, for a while. They've beaten you down. Well, no, I will... Because I do. Sure. They, they announce a new Assassin's Creed, and I'm just like, why the fuck should I buy that? Why the fuck should I spend money on that? No, I was actually going to say, it's hard. For, it sucks because I want to be excited about it. You Wait, so y'all broke the Assassin's Creed cycle? Y'all aren't getting this one? No, I said Dude. I'm not pre-ordering it. I'm gonna if no, it, but Nick, there's like twelve I, different pre-order bonus I didn't, bundles. Uh, yeah, that's true. I don't give a shit about. I pre-order didn't pre-order bundles. the last one, and I still broke down within two days and bought it anyway. And then I was like, "Why the fuck did I play this whole game?" You're <sighs> like Sonic fans. Can we? Can, I have a question. <laughs> What's up? I know everybody likes to poo-poo on Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Yep. Can we have a discussion without being overtly negative? Probably about it? not. Because it's, it's like the, we understand. Duty. Everybody understands. Let me tell you, Assassin's first... Creed. Unity was bad. So, so hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Assassin's Creed Unity had a lot of flaws. A lot of flaws. Yes. Partially being it was broke as fuck. Yes. Uh, but the fucking co-op in that was fan-fucking-tastic. When it worked, I had so much fun playing with other community members and doing some of those co-op missions. <coughs> well, yeah. hey, okay. Let's... How about this conversation? We don't mention anything about previous Assassin's Creed games, okay. anything about our thoughts on all the other about... games in the series, because I feel like every time okay. we talk about Assassin's okay. Creed, it that's, comes into arguments it, it over like, devolves, which ones yes. are the good ones? Usually the good ones and that's, yada, yada. Why I wanted, that's why I always dread okay. having What's new with this, this new one, this and is, what do y'all think So, of Syndicate. This is going to be the first game with a, a female protagonist. Well, there's, there's, so there's two protagonists. There is a, there's a guy and a girl. I don't remember the name. Brother Evie, sister. Evie, Evie is the girl. I remember that because she's a girl. Yes. Were they pulling but yeah. and, and they hired uh, they're nine both, other they're studios. They're both. They're the brother and sister Fry. I know that. Yeah, that's the negativity we don't need there, Chris. Yeah. Uh, so, so anyway, go, going back to it. So they're 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 the, the assassins in this game. They're trying to kind of take over, take back over 1868 London. 1868, I think. Something like 1886. that. 1886. It was like the 60s through the 80s. Yeah. And they're trying to take over the underworld. 18? No, not 1886. 1868. Um, so anyway, they're trying to kind of take back oh, that's the it. town. 1886 is another game. Yeah. So Blood apparently, Blood. apparently, you can hot swap. My name is. But you like the character? Like, like GTA Five? Yes. Brother and sister. But they, they, <laughs> at any yeah, Brad, I'm not into incest, but Assassin's Creed. Come on. Um, that's what. That's, that's the creed. Save it for Rule Thirty Four, guys. That's the creed. <laughs> um, so anyway, some some of the new things in this game that they've added. So first of all, the combat does look like they've overhauled it. It does look much quicker. Uh, it does look like you can uh, during combat you can do moves like it. And a lot of the older Assassin's Creed games, you do a lot of punching and they would just block. And you know, you'd, you'd swing their sword and they would just parry a lot. Um, and in this, it seems like the combat's definitely uh, evolved a lot. Uh, you have new uh, assassins' tools. Uh, one being a gun. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was interesting. A to six think. shooter. Yeah, a revolver. It's like he uses a six shooter and throwing knives and a grappling hook. And he has a uh, what is that called? A kikiri? 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 Ah, that's an elf. That's from a Zelda. forest. <laughs> What? A kukuri. A kukuri? <laughs> kukuri. Like, oh, yeah. Like the, no, I know what that is. Like, yeah. the, yeah. like the sniper yeah. from TFT. Yeah, like that, that one. He has one of those. Um, and uh, he, the new thing they added was, like, the hook blade. Uh, to where it's similar to, like, the grappling hook from Dying Light or whatever. You can kind of... It almost... From the gameplay they showed of him doing it, it looks like... Uh, in all, in, I know we said we were going to mention previous Assassin's Creed games. But in previous games, when you would run up to those pillars and you would slash the rope and swing up. It kind of seems like that. Because you go up to the side 
sides of a building, use your hook, and you fly up to the top. So it seems like that, but you don't have to look for those points. You can kind of use it whenever. I don't know if there's going to be a cool... I would assume there'd be some sort of cooldown on it, so you can't constantly... Yeah. Um, that seems cool. I, it seems like if they implement that in combat, if you can do that, that would be interesting as well. I think you can. Because they, 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 they said you can go all the way up to the tops of buildings. And we just we just saw in the footage that you can um, you, uh, horses and carriages are a new mode of transportation in this game. Yeah, and similar to Watch Dogs, you can hijack people's carriages and there's going to be carriage chases and stuff like that. Uh, as well as they mentioned trains as another mode of Did transportation. You this similar is, this to Watch Dogs? First... Well, in, 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 in Watch Dogs, you could like hijack cars that were in motion and stuff like that. I there, thought you meant like... There is a uh, GTA? No, oh, yeah. the, the one thing that kind of makes this seem um, With this simple push of a button, well, the one thing that kind of stands out to me about this is this thing with the first Assassin's Creed where we're getting like semi like uh, <laughs> technological here like we're like we're starting to see yeah, the turn of the more modern I mean, modes of transportation yeah. just, like this is like the birth of tech of, yeah. wait what? <laughs> like grappling hooks oh my god <laughs> Yes. So I do want to say that we, we they just they just did it in the footage of he went into stealth mode and to Which go into stealth mode you remove your top hat and, and you pull on a hood and you crouch and you walk around which seems like at? the fucking opposite of being stealthy yeah. to me that is not call out blending into me but removing that your top been hat the, the no yeah, yeah, but it's a good series. it's a good it's a good stealth mechanic that Batman's been using for four <laughs> games now yeah. So you can also use your grappling hook as a zip line. That's I cool. don't understand how it works. I do like it though. I do like that. The, yeah, as long as it works, because that was one of the biggest issues. No, he didn't say previous games. But in previous games, what happens when you're chasing a guy and you run up to the end of a building and there's one that's out of your reach? Well, now you can zip line across to it. I really like that. I think they're trying to improve on that kind. You know, that was in previous games. It kind of felt clumsy sometimes. If you, oh shit, I fell off a roof. Now I think this grappling hook might eliminate all of those issues. I, I like that. Um, another thing uh, that I've gotten out of just the footage they've shown, this this gameplay footage, I get a real Gangs of New York vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, especially just with the era, everyone has like fucking mustaches and suspenders and top hats and they're carrying cleavers and shit. And then at one point, and the, they do show that you are kind of... Uh, huh, he killed that guy and didn't throw him into the hay barrel. Yeah. Uh, you are you're, you're kind of taking over territories, and you're, you and your sister are kind of uh, taking back enemies. from the I don't so know whoever the antagonist is in this. It, I get well, the Templars. I know that, but I don't know. There obviously there's the Templars are behind yeah. it, but I know there's a different antagonist. Also, this is another cool thing you can use. The ability to use the See, that's weird. Yeah. I think it's out your enemies. Just Templars. Yeah. It's not like some like. It's like well, people they, they working for they Templars. Mentioned, they they <laughs> mentioned there are like seven like gang leaders in the yeah. area, and you're kind of taking. They're over. all Templars. Yeah. <laughs> Templars. Yeah. Like, but so but, anyway, so you yeah. take over the area, and now you kind of own that, and you kind of build up gangs, and they even show like gang like kind of turf wars, of like where it's like a bunch of you bring a bunch of your dudes, and they bring a bunch of theirs, and you go fucking all out. So like Gangs of New York. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Almost yeah. like exactly like Gangs of New York. You meet in the middle of a street, and yeah, like so. You know what? So I I think I made I. I probably said this before in the past but because th there's been rumors that this was going to be the next assassin's creed correct for a couple months now um and it leaked a little while back that kind of confirmed it um and, and it was a it was real poor timing because obviously i'm a big assassin's creed fan last year really left me disappointed it pissed a lot of people off myself included so obviously my first instinct was to say you know well i'm definitely not going to pre-order the next game i'm going to wait and see if the game is actually good before i give them my money which yeah. is fine um, but like, it also made me, you know, for this hesitant one. to be excited. Yeah, no, definitely. definitely. But, but, for years, this has been like the setting that I've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. Which, 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 let me say, you know, for finally doing the Jack the Ripper London setting, right? I'm surprised. They're not actually going to do that, though, right? They're not going to put no, Jack, Jack the, the Ripper, Ripper will be in this. I can almost no, guarantee. No, like, I feel like even they're like, that's a little too but obvious, But the Assassin's right, Creed has, is filled with, like, the most ridiculous... They've talked, about, they've talked about Charles Darwin being a big supporting character, yeah. and, um... There was Jack, another one. Jack Charles, the Ripper like, is either going to be Dickens in it, or yeah. you're, Charles Dickens. You're going to be the one that doing the Jack the Ripper I have to imagine like for him or something. I have to imagine they're at least that self-aware. Well, the problem right? is, Jack the, wait, didn't Jack the Ripper go around killing hookers? You're... Yeah, I don't think they want you doing. I don't think you know. And I don't yeah, think the hookers, hookers are Templars. Hookers are uh, on I your side. Yes, Templar hookers. If, if the, all the hookers were Templars, and they're like, you're missing my point though. Okay. Like even if Jack the Ripper's not in the game, I'm surprised that the first gameplay of this game is not at night. Yeah, it's, like, because that that's 
the vibe I expected when when you first like mentioned this yeah, like, yeah. Spec- what you wanted and, and what, what this game was. Uh, I thought it was going to be more of that vibe, but mm-hmm. I'm not really getting that. I'm getting Games of New York yeah. because it's during the daytime. It's but the honestly, it's, it's kind of exciting too because I think I, I think this is oh a God, setting. I, I think this is a setting in which when in this when the sun does set and at night it, the tone could dramatically shift. Do you guys see what's happening right now? A chase sequence. A chase sequence. Yeah. It's not going to be any different. Didn't we all one star this shit? What the fuck? Right. No, oh, but this one's different. You're in a carriage now. Oh. You hijack a. Was that a chick? Right. Like, yeah. Like, you can beat up chicks. It's it's it is like, it's it's like equal it's opportunity. <laughs> you can equally beat up both girls there and guys. Go. But there now it also gives you a little path so you can follow them so oh you know where God. to go. He's doing terrible. And Super Jake. watch watch the carriage. Know. It will take damage. Hey, but you know like, what? It'll you'll dramatically visit, take you know, damage. Yeah, you'll see it. You'll see it all of a sudden when you get. I think the next time he gets hit, like all of a sudden, there's like half of it's like crumpled up. You know. Also, I gotta say, look. Just instantly, just. I gotta say, horses don't run into things; they die. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, look at all these things that, that these horses are knocking. Oh, another carriage! It's not a car, okay? Yeah. These are animals. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you know, I saw them knock over a telephone pole. Yeah, it's she did. It's true. It's, it's like or you know, a lamp post. Sorry, yeah. I'm about to say, no, not, yeah, telephone. not telephone. You know. I, <laughs> We made it to the, game. the chase sequence thing, like, they added that pa- uh, like, visual cue. This is totally Gangs, Gangs of New York, York right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they added that visual cue in the road during chase sequences and whatnot, which yeah. you laugh, but like, feels right at home that could make those sequences far less frustrating. Probably. And maybe actually make them fun. Well, I think one of the things they probably have removed from them is the, is the whole... Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> cool. it, 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 in previous Assassin's Creed games, it was a lot of... I know you weren't going to talk about it. But like, the, you f- mission failure statuses. Mm-hmm. You know, like doing something during a chase sequence that would automatically make you fail it. And I think that's probably some of the stuff they got rid of and Hopefully, now yeah. It's, yeah, it's just straight up just essentially not chase sequence it's so much follow the white line until you get to the destination. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of things. Hmm. I don't know. I'm... This scenario, I'm, this thing right here weirded me out though because he was like, I'm... What, Jacob, is that his name? Yeah, yeah I think Jacob so. Jacob and Evie Fry and you work for us now and they're like, yeah! Like, wait, what? Why are these people excited that these people just came in, killed a bunch of dudes and were like, you work for me. Like, Video Those games. Guys are do, do all these people sound super British? Like, Darwin's and... Darwin and yeah, Dickens. Yeah, a little okay. bit. There you go. Well, I guess the footage is over, so... Uh. <laughs> Well, I mean, this, it's a, it's a news topic. We're not playing the game. We're just talking about that. It's been announced October twenty third. That's sooner than I thought. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's their yearly cycle. Um, or less. Than well, you, the thing is, it's yearly, but they keep. Jumping it's not from yearly. October there was two last year in November. This is a third one, less than a year later. Yeah. Sure. Well, you know, the one that came out in November was really just a rehash. So the things that stand out: no multiplayer. Correct. What? Do you just... No multiplayer. Well, it hasn't been announced. I... No, I... they said they're no not doing No competitive it. multiplayer. They said they're not doing oh, multiplayer. They, I don't think they've ruled out... Com- what is... It's just like Ratchet and Clank. They just decided to stop doing it. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, but... that That's like the worst part about this whole thing for me. Is we're getting another Assassin's Creed Unity where they're going to focus all of their time and attention into the single player, which didn't really seem to help at all. And there's nothing about uh, I don't know I just I just really like the multiplayer I think it was a really inventive unique thing that they had going that nobody else did and that which we just watched looked like Batman it was Batman Gotham by Gaslight is what that was all right yeah but let's, let's move on yep. it's just I there's a part of me that wants to be excited but my my uh, my hurt. only thing is hurt. is if if it's going to be good I it has to have co-op. Like the pre, like Proper Unity co-op. did, yeah. Like well, I don't know because I, I thought the, the character Unity hopping a la GTA Five. No, I do like to that me, concept. Seems really I, no, I I do like that. I don't think it's going to be the same. I think it's more of a you choose whether you're Evie or you're Jacob kind of I situation. Think they confirm that you can hop out of, hop from one character to the next at any point you want. Mm-hmm. I think that's. But I, I don't know if it's going to be the same as it was in GTA, whereas one of them's doing something in a mission and the other's doing something else, and you hop back and forth. I don't think it's going to be like that. And yeah, we don't really know. Remember how when it works we had Batman either? This exact mm-hmm. same conversation yeah. about Batman. Yeah, last I know. Week. I know. Um, but I, I just really hope it has good co-op like Unity did. Unity was a poopy game, but. You know, me, M- MGS, how much, Jaeger, of, how much of Unity Chai, was poopy versus the game was just broken? Well, so... Uh, a because lot, if the game it, wasn't broken, it would be of, a fine Assassin's yes, Creed game. A lot of the issues were the game is broken. That was a lot of the issue. Um, I heard a lot of people say that despite those issues, that just 
also still seems like a kind of whatever. No, no, it, it, I'm not saying it was a great game by any means. It was an okay game, which unfortunately was broken to all fuck, which made it even worse. But like I said, the the time I spent, I mean, Nick, you played some of the co-op with us, didn't you? Yeah. So, did you not have fun of, doing those? Yeah, they, if I had fun, but I, I I'm not didn't saying exactly it, feel organized. <laughs> no, it yeah. didn't. But that was one of the fun things about it. Was just everyone. Run, I mean, didn't me and you get shot and like people kept trying to pick us up Dude, and like yeah. It's not. I'm it was not this huge cluster right? where we all just kept like dying on top of each other. It was like a pile of assassins. Like, <laughs> but it was still fun. And so that's one of the things is playing with other people is inherently fun, especially when you're not necessarily out to kill each other. Because yeah. then you can kind of kill other people, yeah. but it's, I just if they completely remove that aspect, because I mean that's one of the things they featured uh, featured with Unity was that there's there's four uh, what's his name Arnos yeah you know this all the same guy but I don't know how they're going to do that with having these, these I mean, brother sister historically Assassin's Creed has always been like they have a they have a baseline or a foundation formula that never changes but they always introduce something and. Like a lot, like there's a lot of developers or a lot of series out there where they'll introduce something small, and it's like that's a really cool addition. It works very well. Assassin's Creed likes has always been about like let's introduce this like completely new fresh concept, but f- half the time it's not it, it doesn't work out. Yeah, it yeah, and they've it stopped. They've kind of stopped doing that. They've stopped taking big risks because every time they touched on something good and people complained about it, they got scared and pulled it out of the next one. And they're just kind of focusing on retweaking the the old formula with like, oh, no, he's got a grappling hook. They've been doing this series for fucking 10 years. I mean, and it took honestly, them this like, long to get to grappling hook? Like, you know what I mean? Wait, is the grappling hook what you... Can, like, you look at that and you, you consider that to be the big thing in this no, game? No, but what I'm saying me, is it's, it's, it's indicative the... of like, the, like, what is different about this game compared to, say, Unity or well, for Brotherhood? Me it's the, 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 the idea of jumping from two... But, Having two main characters and jumping from one to the other is okay. a huge difference to me. Yeah, that's a big difference for Assassin's Creed, but that's not like it's not that a, wasn't that wasn't something unique to them. That's not that's nothing unique no, to Assassin's not, I didn't Creed. Say it was unique they to Assassin's had things Creed. that were unique to Assassin's Creed, and because they couldn't make it work perfectly, they just completely abandoned the idea instead of like trying to refine it. You know? Sure, that's, that's fair. I don't know. <clears throat> that's fair. The carriage transportation system. Really? <laughs> We're calling that a system? Um, let's wait and see how the game actually looks and plays. I mean, we're yeah. obviously going to get a spoonful of it at E3. Oh, there's going to be fast travel, Chris. No, they're going to they're going to introduce the app at E3. Oh my god, yeah, they will. <laughs> no, they've already they've already it, introduced like a go to our website and become become a member of the family and all this shit and like you know it was no, like, the, it was the yeah. biggest problem with Assassin's Creed is they just I think they try and overcomplicate it with all no, these no, ex, yeah. extraneous things they, they, that they, don't they have matter. this huge they net have to, they, they have this huge net that they create with all these different things but the problem is there's all these giant holes because they don't focus on any one making one section of the net good like and Far so Cry they, yeah Far Cry is so good but it's like it's like they they we know what Far Cry is they produce it they put it out it's polished it's good and there's really nothing outside of that really yeah there's not a whole lot of they don't have I mean, maybe they had, there's probably some things, but they didn't have like a special app that goes with it, or and like all the other bullshit that, that they try and do. And yeah. I, I don't know Assassin's why they try Creed and cram it all into Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Creed. Yeah. Anyway, but, yeah, uh, moving on from Assassin's somebody Creed. Somebody brought up a good point about the Batman character switching thing, which you can do on the fly in combat. Mm-hmm. Why, if you're Batman and you're fighting a bunch of dudes mm-hmm. and yeah. you tag in Robin, why does Robin just not help you fight the dudes? Wait, does Batman I, stop was, fighting? No, oh, that he, was he that just was goes only, away, right? No, no, you can do combo moves with like yeah. Robin and. But when you Nightwing. switch, are they still there <coughs> fighting with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's it's not like from, they not, go. Like, they don't tag like in show. and out. Yeah. They show they show like Batman and Nightwing doing all these like combo attacks, like taking out multiple enemies at the same time. But I feel like that's like the tag move, you know, like in Tech and Tag. Like, I don't think that's the case. Okay. I think that's just the combo you do when you're together. So does that mean like your partners are going to kind of be around you at all times throughout the game? Maybe on certain That's missions, idea. which is kind of Batmany, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Um. Uh. Okay. Well, what's next, Nick? Uh. Nolan. 
That was my news topic. Oh yeah, that was your oh. news topic. I was like, I was like, no one's over here talking about a news topic. Just I was like, oh wait, that wasn't even mine. No, mine. Uh, I mean, who even liked Revelations? I did. I'm, I'm sorry. Can we? Because a joke. Because a joke. Because a, a joke. Let me tell you all the reasons joke. I liked Revelations, Brad. The hook. It was no, a joke. Fuck it was a hook. joke. It was a joke. <laughs> he really <laughs> does. The tower. He really defense. doesn't want to hear this. The really tower defense. Was but the good. fact that he doesn't want to hear this makes me really want to tell him about it. The tower defense. Um, anyways, uh, I no, wonder... that's not what you really liked about Revelations. No, I liked, the, I liked what they did with the character. I'm okay, so okay. sorry. Okay. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, we... I wanted to talk about Assassin's Creed Revelations for a while, so... Did you? No. I, I want to talk about my new topic, which is actually... What? Can what? we just do mine real quick? I feel like it's not like a Are you going to steal mine? Is that what you're going to do? No, I'm not going to steal... First of all, you stole it from me first, so fuck you. B... It's not, I'm not going to steal it. It's just not a big thing, and I feel like we're going to talk about yours more. So, I'm not. <laughs> Mine was that uh, over the last week, apparently, a uh, artist at Miranda Studios, which is the CG studio owned by Guillermo del Toro. Yep. Yeah, fuck um, yeah. Uh, Don't bring it. Accidentally let slip that they, on their LinkedIn profile, that they worked on a trailer for Fallout 4. So this seems to be an accidental confirmation that we will hmm. be seeing do some these people Fallout not have, 4. Do they not have d agreements that say you can't put this on resumes? No, they, probably they, they do. do. They because, just don't think about because it. Because the big thing that kind of like bolstered this is right after that hit the web and like all the all the all the news sites were writing articles about this guy's LinkedIn profile. Miranda Studios went around sending emails saying, "Please take this down. Like, please stop reporting about this." And everything. What, what does Miranda so, Chris Studios Davis, do? Just so, just so I we're think clear, they Chris mostly Davis. do cinematic. Like, Wait, so I know it's called a, a non-disclosure agreement. Trailer? I think so. Well, every every Fallout is launched with a cinematic trailer. Yeah. And yeah, since three, and the yeah, idea is that you know in New Vegas, yeah. and but those are like doing teaser, but teasers. Is doing their their E three. They're, they're doing that press conference before E three for the first I, time. I, I think what's going to happen is there's the no way that's not being announced. At the, I think at the press, press conference. conference they're definitely going to show that that video that Marina Studios is working on. I'm, I'm not saying we might not see. A, I'm a not saying teaser. we might not see more than that. I'm just saying that's definitely going to be what you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean that's that's kind of cool. It seems to be all but certain that we will be hearing about. Fallout 4 very in the near future. Some That's old timey month. music. Boston. Slow zoom out of a dude in power yep. armor. Yep. Fucking Jesus Christ. War never changes. <laughs> it better be more than that. <laughs> <laughs> it better be. Is, is Ron Perlman good? Is it going to be like a. Is, is it basically just the Fallout 3 trailer again? I, Maybe. I don't know. That was a good trailer. I Guys, had, I can I talk for a second about the rumored locations for Fallout and how they're completely seem uninspired to me. Wait, uh, what? Like Boston is is like they're going with Boston, which you know yeah. Boston's a great city. I, it doesn't seem ambitious. Like it, it's been how long has it been since Fallout Three? You want Asia uh, or Jack the Ripper? Seven years. Yeah, you want Victorian London Fallout or <laughs> Japan Fallout or no, no. I want Antarctica. I don't know I what I want. Good. I don't. You know, the funny thing, I don't know what I want from Fallout you Four. Want, you want. You I can't like, think of a setting that I'd really. I mean, it's love the apocalypse, I mean, so it doesn't matter where you are. Consider, yeah, it's look yeah the consider same. that the series started in like the California wasteland. Yeah. You know, like there wasn't anything really. It was it was desert, and then and then later installments did things like DC and Las Vegas, which are fine. I think Boston's a good city. Boston is a very old, very storied, rich what if it was New York? setting. Hmm. New York. I think so. I think New York would be a little harder. Uh, or are you talking yeah, about? I, I assume you're talking about New York, like city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that'd be a little more difficult mm -hmm. to do. Or Detroit. Uh, it, oh, <laughs> Detroit already looks like a Fallout Chicago? game. I don't know. Uh, I, so I. Why does it have to be a city? <laughs> well, because the problem is in the country, there's nothing to do. <laughs> what if it was at Disney World? Well, I mean, well, what if the whole the, game took place? The game's Disney always the game's always centered around like these vaults, which were. Probably built in more urban How areas. How about Castlevania City? Says and phenomenal. I don't know. Were they? Were they? Did they build vaults in other countries? Like, could we? Ever uh, no, get, I, like, I assume they did. Well, the thing is, it, this is kind of all based off the you know the whole uh, nuclear fallout scare back in the fifties when yeah people were building. You the thing know, is, I think it has to be in the in the United vaults. States because. In it's other all countries, kind of building, it's Fallout like, Africa. It uses that. Uh, well, that's the thing. I doubt there's more than. I doubt they built that many Fallout shelters. In vaults Africa. were commissioned by the U.S. government. So yeah. There you go. Everyone else died. And America lived. Yay! I, I feel <laughs> like you know, lucky. I feel like in a nuclear war, I think like 
like Africa is probably not going to get nuked that much. No, it's probably not. <laughs> yeah, but so like it doesn't, like, in a nuclear war, it doesn't really matter if you get hit with a nuclear it's bomb. It's nuclear fallout. It's like is the nuclear issue. winter when it covers yeah. the entire hundreds Earth. of years yeah. of <laughs> yeah, that was the issue. conditions that get you. Yeah. So no, they did not die from the blast, but from what came afterwards. God damn it. Anyway, the smell. I'm sure I'll be excited when I see it. I hope it happens like right before I die. <laughs> so you can see it, but then don't have to deal with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wait, the release Dying. of Fallout? Yeah. No, no, I, no. I think he meant nuclear <laughs> actual oh, okay. Fallout. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, Wait, you don't want to play that? <laughs> sorry, future generations, but fuck you. <laughs> I just want a Mad little Mad Max before I die. Sorry. That's fine. All right, my news topic for the week was that that he took from me. I was the first Go one ahead. to update Go the doc. Man. Uh, I right. was the first one to update. Right. The doc. Sorry, no one was you're the right. first one to update the doc, and he didn't claim it. Ignoring the fact that the doc was a system of your invention, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right. <laughs> I just wanted to talk to about make his own doc. If y'all remember, the, if y'all remember the game, the Black Glove, which Crispy could probably tell you more about than I could. Yeah, was that, was, was, that, already, was that really was that based on OJ Simpson? For, yeah, it was actually. <laughs> D- explain how he could how he could yeah. wear the glove, but then it doesn't fit later because it actually had like a hole in space time. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh-huh. that uh, it's that surrealist first person adventure game. I don't really know what it was supposed to be like puzzly puzzle game. There was gonna be a lot of puzzles going on. Mm-hmm. Made by former Bioshock devs. Yes, had Bioshock. a very Bioshock look to it. it. Had a yeah, it did look very Bioshock esque. Wait, so how um, did the glove work again? There's a portal. I don't know. Like, yeah, like, there he was would, like he a, would look through it and then turn it, and you could see a hole. There's a hole in space time on one side, so you can kind of look through. I, and you could did, use it to like see things by looking through the hole. Could you stick your stuff hand. through the hole? I don't know. Like your penis. We the never, game's never gonna come out. We, though, we may never point. find out. <laughs> Because that so game is it's after well, it is on it is on hold, which is a soft way of saying mm-hmm. which is a soft way of saying it's been canceled. Yeah. Um, it was it was, it was part successfully of Kickstarter. Kickstarter, right? It was not successfully Kickstarter. Oh, well, that That's makes part sense. of the reason. Yeah. It, it the, I don't know how this it game... fell short of its Kickstarter goal. They tried to show it off at PAX and at uh, GDC Space and... Time Glove, where you can turn a box from crunched to uncrunched, which is like. The core of singularity. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I ever told you how much I like that game? <laughs> uh, anyway, like it, it's it's crazy to think about this because we have a game being made by developers who worked on the original Bioshock. Yep, that's a great pedigree. It looks really cool and really high concept. That sounds cool. Failed to get kickstarted. Womp this womp. week or in the past two weeks, we've seen a game being made by. Uh, the former creators of Banjo Kazooie from Rare, mm-hmm. and that got that got kickstarted like fucking crazy. Yeah, 30, and 30 yesterday, and which we'll get to a, in a second with with uh, with Bloodstain, funded in less than four hours. Yep. It's kind of blows my mind to think this game wasn't funded. Like even like even mm-hmm. if obviously Kickstarter doesn't provide the um, the entirety of like funding for a project like yeah. this, but it does provide. You know, well, I mean, the the, pro- the problem is when the Kickstarter fails, they don't get any of that money. No, they don't. Yeah, and also they and they come at it with no money, and they also come at it with, you know, kind of a stain on that on that project. Also, like, they potential investors would see that as people are interested in. It. No, definitely, and yeah. it might be. I, I, I think, feel that's, like that the, I think that's the, the biggest killer is 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 failed Kickstarter campaigns because yeah, maybe if you had been trying to get you know funding from a, a publisher. And they're like, oh, well, clearly people don't want this game. Why would I fund it as, yeah. as, as, as an issue? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that was unfortunate. But the game, as of this week, has been officially put on hold indefinitely, which is probably the end of that project. That did seem like a crispy news topic. I'm not saying you stole it. From I know. Me. Well, I was so surprised when I saw it. Okay. First of all, I did put it in the dock before Bloodstain happened. Oh, and I also put it in the dock before the Assassin's Creed announcement happened. So there's that. Can I take the temporal high ground, I see? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> but anyways, without further ado, let's get to the news topic that... Very excited about this new Kickstarter, Bloodstained, which... By the way, the key to a successful Kickstarter is have a popular game that was successful <laughs> in the 90s. Yep. Be the person who made that game. Yep. And then make, make a spiritual one. successor to that game. <laughs> yep. And then that you, equals you, Kickstarter you success. never fail. Yeah. So, um, 
So we are all in this room officially backers of yep. Bloodstain. We are. Yeah. Ritual of the Night. Uh, which was funded yesterday in less than three hours, right? Or is it four hours? Uh, I mean, I mean, I their goal was five hundred thousand dollars, and they I hit it four in. hours. Yeah, but, they yeah. hit five hundred thousand dollars very quickly, and have yeah. since then surpassed. And they hit a million within twenty four hours. They're they? above one point five million, I believe. Right? Yes. Uh, I can double check. That was, by the way, so, I think so, another so, successful Kickstarter uh, crux is going to be a really good video because that video was awesome. It was pretty good. <laughs> so Koji Igarashi. Was the man behind Castlevania, the Castlevania series since Symphony of the Night? Um, one point six million. One point six million, um, which is good. The uh, the so he kicks. They were teasing it. You know, we talked about it on last week's podcast, but they officially launched the Kickstarter called Bloodstain, which is very much as he kind of puts it. Like this is an Egovania. This is he he's making another one of those games the games that he's really good at making and he was very uh forward about it too like the video was mm-hmm. very not not even really dancing around yeah. the fact that this was like He's no longer with Konami, but he still wants to make Castlevania games, and this is what it, this is his solution. Well, I think he, the in, really in, in the video, he was like, "They told me no one would ever want to play like this, a game like this. They're wrong." And then he throws his he wine throws glass a wine glass. That was so great. <laughs> They're wrong. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, the of Thor. Yeah, it's another a, another Egovania. The um, so so just some details. Um, he did give us the deets. He when well, he left Konami a couple of years ago or whatever, and he you know he talked about wanting to pursue this this thing, and they're even kind of teasing it at last PAX Prime, I believe. Yes, they were. Um, they were handing out like a some but, kind of pamphlet or something that had something in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But since then, he got a job at a mobile company, and apparently, he is keeping his day job. Yeah. Well, I think that That's was that was says. that was one of the uh, the deals when he signed yeah. on with this mobile company was that he could still uh, go out and try and make this game. He could do whatever he wants to get funding for this game on the side. So yeah, and, and I'm wondering and, if this it, mobile company might be one of the investors into Bloodstain because what what apparently is that the Kickstarter funding for this game is a very small part correct. of the funding. Like I heard numbers like like it was only planned to be like ten percent. Of the funding for this game, that you know, like a lot of Kickstarters, um, they, every, like the Kickstarter was just used to show interest, to show that people wanted it. Yes. The thing so is, at the rate it's going, yeah, it, it's going to very well cover plenty. a huge chunk of the. So, so it, it, his 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 PR person Ben Judd, I think was his yeah, name, yeah. was saying how yeah he was the one that approached him was like, look, people want this game. Let me prove it to you. Went around trying to get um, you know publishers to back him. Several said no, but there were a bunch that said yes, but the money wasn't quite there. And I think that was the situation was one of them was like, yeah, but I don't know, if people want it, and they're like, well, let's do a Kickstarter, prove people want it, and then they're also on top of the Kickstarter. This publisher will still. Uh, throw in their their backing. Also, it's, do we know who that publisher is yet? Uh, we no, don't. No. Okay. And the other interesting thing <laughs> is that is that this is going to be a retail release. Correct. This this was never like kind of a stretch goal. This was a thing of like you invest sixty dollars, you get a retail copy of the game. <laughs> and even the digital version is, I believe, thirty dollars. So mm-hmm. so this is a game that that you know. This is kind of what I always wanted, you know? Ever since Symphony of the Night, the series has been great, but it's been on a handheld. And I've always said, like, dude, all Konami has to do is make that successor to Symphony of the Night, put it on a console, say this is, you know, because Symphony of the Night stood out in an era when when everything was going 3D. 3D, 3D, 3D. Yep. You know, Final Fantasy VII, it's this big new 3D game, you know? And, and, and Symphony of the Night dared to come out to be this, like, 2D game, which Sony, like, super frowned upon back in the day on the original PlayStation. Like, we don't want 2D games. But it did, and it was, like, very successful, at least critically. I mean, no Castlevania game has really sold that fucking much. But, um... But it would. Be, I've always kind of wanted like a console side-scrolling game. But I feel like these days, you know, we we kind of get those. You know, like like Rayman and those Mario games. Like you know, people will play two D games. So I'm glad that this is coming to consoles. But it's PS4, it, Xbox One, and PC. Yes, and, and and this this does look like a. Um, I mean, so this game is still in its very early. Bloodstained is still very early. They, they haven't oh, yeah, started it's, it's, it's working on development. They it's had all some, con- technically it's all concept. It's all concept art, but if you look at the concept art, like it looks straight oh, up, my God. like it's, the stuff you expect from yeah. from 
the man. Dude, some some of those weapons look fucking fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah they look great. The, the, some of the whips, the the hammers they were showing, the the, the rapiers and stuff with yeah. the cool designs on them. I'm wondering well, what, what the I actual like to gameplay see. will end up looking like. Well, because like the, the, like the game. if yeah. you were to assume that it's gonna look so, so similar to the concept art we've seen, it looks something more akin to like. Uh, like Odin Sphere or something. Well, yeah, like so a the, style. Style. the thing is, it is it is it is two point five D. Yeah. Is the thing. So they're three D images. They're three D sprites uh, and characters uh, in a in a two D plane. Uh, uh, okay, so Ayami Kojima, who's the who's yeah. the artist that did all the really cool art like of that era of Castlevania games. You see it like the yeah. really highly detailed art. She's not going to be working on the Correct. project, which is a shame. She was kind of the concept artist. I was hoping for maybe like a stretch goal. She could do like a like a cover or something. I mean, but I like the art that, they, that they've it's gone It's fine, with. but I mean, it's not... It would be great to one day see her art actually get to the point where, you know, technology can have her art in gameplay. But the but the, the good news is Michiru Yamane, the... the the woman who does the soundtrack, yeah. soundtracks for those games, she is part of the project. So she will be doing the music for this there, game. There's two so it's going to sound like a Castlevania There's game. two sample tracks on the Kickstarter page, yeah. and they're both so I, You know what I was really surprised about is that how, like, unabashedly, like, it's it's called Ritual of yeah. the Night. The ritual, night. yeah. Like, uh, Symphony of the Night, Ritual of the Night. It is... <clears throat> Yep, the, yeah. this, they're not. It's, it's, it's yeah, like the banjo kazooie. That's it's like how ukulele. It gets its goal in four hours. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah that's true. It, just like ukulele. You know, if they didn't have two characters where one rides on the other, they probably wouldn't have been as successful as they were. You know, you yeah. gotta you gotta lean into it. Did anyone else hear back ukulele? By the way, I did. No, I did. I did. Yeah. Cool. Um, just so curious. Um, I will say that. So we have well, the. There's a developer. That's the other thing we haven't mentioned. Like mm-hmm. he's not creating a new team. He is he is the lead on this project, but it is developed by Inti Creates. Yep. Which they're the guys who are making Mighty Number no. Nine. Yep. The thing is, Inti Creates they have they have a history of games that people like. They're the ones who made the Mega Man Zero games back in the day. They also did Mega Man Nine and mm-hmm. Ten. Yeah. Which know? were throwbacks, right? Which were throwbacks, but again, people really liked. Um, and so, uh, which you know, I never really played much of those games. But I'm probably gonna like spend some time playing some like Mega Man Zero. I, I'm excited Me- about Mighty Mega- Number Nine. The this thing year is, too. yeah, Mighty Number Nine, Mega Man ZX and ZX Advent or whatever um, were like kind of the first time that Mega Man became like a Metroidvania. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back and try those games just to see how good these guys are at making that type of game. Which I hear those games are pretty good. So um, I'll try those. Um, I mean, I'll. Uh, it's I'm weird. Kind of like I've, like. There's a lot of like major franchises that I just don't have much of a history with. Like I've barely touched Mega Man. I've played one, two Castlevanias if you count Lords of Shadow, mm-hmm. no. like to completion, which is a shame. I love Donosaro, by the way, and I'm still yeah. playing. I might play those, but like I don't have a huge history with the series. And this year, and you know, in the next two years, I'm going to be playing Mighty Number no. Nine and playing Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which mm-hmm. you know, two very obvious like follow-ups or spiritual successors to classic. The franchises. game's going to have co-op. Yeah, that's cool. Which is that's cool. one of the things I'm excited about. The, the thing is, like, he's always wanted to try to make that happen. But back in Portrait of Ruin, he kind of experimented with with a co op mode. There was a co op boss rush mode that you can actually play with another player on on their DS. Um, and of course, Harmony of Dis- Harmony of uh, Despair, Despair, which was you know this multiplayer game that had like these these levels. Which again, that game is this exclusively amazing. on console, or are they also making mobile versions of this? Uh, I think they're doing I think PC and Linux. Just yeah, just just console. Oh, 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 yeah, not, see, that's not cool. mobile. They have not, not mobile. announced. All right, any so let's handout. see. Like, here's the stretch goals that they've achieved. Second playable character, which is great, but that's kind of a staple. Art book upgraded to hardcover. What what tier did you have to? Did you have uh, to hundred? Ah, oh, maybe yeah. I should up mine. <laughs> well, that art book would be crazy. Yeah, David, David Hayter David was one of the things I was going to mention. G codes. Wait, so they're David Hayter's voicing one of the main characters. I think he's like the villain or something. I mean, historically, classic. Oh yeah, the main antagonist. So not only is this going to be like it's a two two point five D Castlevania esque game, but like those games never had voice acting, right? Really. Uh, yeah. Wait, no, Castlevania games did. Mm-hmm. I mean, really? well, Symphony of the Night yeah. did. Symphony of the Night did. Had voice acting? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. 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 classic voice acting. It was kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. A, little bit, a little weird, yeah. What is a man? You know, yeah. you've heard that stuff. Yeah. Oh, wait, you've never played Symphony so, of the Night? Well, yeah, he hasn't. One of the things I wanted to bring up, I unlocked it for you 
on whatever that one game yeah, was. That's true. On your on, oh, Rondo on like, Blood? Yeah. Was that Dracula X Chronicles. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, one of the things I wanted to bring up on the Kickstarter campaign was they're doing something that's similar to what um, Exploding Kittens did, is they have like achievements. And so, like, achievements like, oh, if X amount of Kickstarter backers and how many Achieve Twitter it. followers we get and, you know, how many Tumblr followers, all this stuff. And so once they, once they hit the, yeah, that's the list. Oh, cool. Once they hit those, those will unlock new uh, stretch goals. So there are stretch goals that are locked behind these achievements. So it's essentially kind They're of like... They're turning this whole thing into a video game. Oh, yeah, yeah a little bit. But it's like a, it's a word of mouth campaign. It's the more... You get people talking about it, the more, the bigger, the the bigger and better the game will be. Does that make sense? Like they, like so. The, I think some some of those those stretch goals are like um, uh, castle unlock dungeon level stretch goals. Um, uh, all the backers in a certain tier get like an eight back. Uh, it's remix. all like level 100 backers. Yeah, the, a lot of them are, are, are level 100, 100 backers. backers. But I mean, it's like uh, it's stuff like that, you know, adding uh, viewing viewing castle codes. levels. Yeah, stuff like that. They're, Ego, they're, cosplays. Ego cosplays <laughs> once you unlock enough. Stuff like that. And he cosplays on a regular basis, basically, anyway, <laughs> with his like hat and whip and shit. Yeah. Um, Get a one-inch button. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I think it's an interesting thing that they're doing. They're just kind of, they're making it into kind of a game to to uh, reinforce Dude, that's cool. that's how supporting you, how, their Kickstarter. That's another thing that makes ki- Kickstarters really exciting. I mean, they like, are at it's uh, been what two days now? Yeah, what they still have Monday? thirty-one days to go. Oh, no, it was one day. It started yesterday. Yeah, it started yeah. yesterday. That's it's weird. been one day, and they they have twenty-one thousand backers as of right now, and they still have thirty-one days left. Which I, I think they have more backers than copies of Castlevania Judgment that were sold. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that, uh, I, I I will say I guess the, I guess the last thing that I think is really cool is that yesterday there was like a, an Ega Mania Egavania Mania stream yeah. on kind of funny games where for eight, I wish I could have watched for that. eight hours Ego was there and they were playing other Metroidvanias where the developers like, would come on and games that. Ega's games inspire yeah. these games, and and, and yeah, yeah, the actual developers like shoot these introduction videos of like saying like we're so excited about the Kickstarter, uh, we're glad that he's playing this game, you know, Symphony of the Night and stuff like really inspired this stuff. And the cool thing is like most of these games, Ego was playing himself. Yeah, he played for, like them. the first time. He played he played like um, Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy. He played, he played Shadow played Complex. Shadow Complex. It was funny when Shovel Knight. Yeah, it was funny when yeah when uh, with Shadow Complex because Donald Mustard I think is his name one of the the lead developers yeah. of Shadow Complex was there and you could tell he was so nervous like yeah. he was like he's like I fucking hey, I can't believe you're playing my game and like stuff like that and like oh How'd it go? but the, the, the funny thing is is Ego was watching cuz cuz Shadow Complex is a 2.5D game yeah. mm-hmm. and it almost seemed like he was getting some ideas yeah. like especially cuz how if you if you remember Shadow Complex while it was a 2.5D game there was lots of like cutscenes that would move the camera angle and show you that this is a 3D world like the beginning of the game you know you come across you could turn the corner when you're that like soldier dude in the power suit yeah. and like there's you you're, you're shooting that helicopter in the background and stuff like that uh, when you when you go on that elevator that goes down the slant and the kind of camera turns mm-hmm, and stuff mm-hmm. like that and like it almost seemed like Ego was like oh like you like getting ideas well you from... you understand that like there are some strong rumors out there or even some terminology or that was used that suggests that that this is going to be a 2.5D game. But, yes. But people don't exactly understand. Like, there's always been a little debate as to what that really means. Mm-hmm. Like, because some people consider 2.5D just having a side-scrolling game with 3D graphics. Yeah. And then there's the whole, like, Klonoa thing where, you know, the the levels actually, like, twisting around. Like, 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 like Blackgate. Like Blackgate, yeah. you know. Or, I'm pretty sure it's going to be more of the... the the 2D like a plane. Guilty Gear thing, yeah, like yeah, yeah. or like, like that recent Guilty Gear that, where they do like shifts in the camera or and e- stuff. Even like Shadow Complex, where the world is you don't you don't move yeah. back and forth between the planes. You're just in the one plane. Yeah, I think it's gonna be like that. Which yeah. would be interesting. I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I mean, they've they've done that before. I mean, Ego's done that before. He did that the remake of of uh, Rondo of Blood on the PSP, mm-hmm. but that looked a little. Weird. I, I don't. I I like sprite based art, and it's it's. It's gonna be a shame if if this game doesn't really have that. But mm-hmm. uh, you know. I'm still excited to see how it's gonna look. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of which, I mean, there was that goes. concept art. I mean, I don't know how we'll capture that with 3D technology, but you know, yeah, I mean, it, it Gu- def- Guilty Gear did. So. It definitely, lo- oh yeah. It's but definitely here's the question: yeah. 
That's going to make for a great audio podcast. <laughs> right? <laughs> it did say low battery. For, I like how the battery indicator is like, low battery dead. Like, yeah. what, what is the point of that warning? <laughs> that it's like, by the way, I'm dying now. This is about to happen. That was, that was fun. All right. this, there's no stopping this. this. Guys, I'm giving serious consideration to upping my, upping my uh, pledge to $100 to get that art book. No. Also, MGS was talking mess. He's what like, is he ever not? What, well, he was like, oh, you know, Brad was giving me shit for, you know, getting all these collector's editions of these games, which I wasn't really giving you shit. I was just asking, you, why not just get another game? But my point is, I'm not going to get the art book level because I stand by what I say, and I don't spend money on that stuff. E- even if even even this kind of game that I'm super excited about. Now, if it was like Malia heard I wanted something like that and decided to get it for me as a gift, I'd be happy, but I'm not going to spend more than the $60 to get a copy of I mean, of I'm going to try my best to resist. <laughs> I want to see more uh, art. Wait, Nick, our book is a $150. Nope, not, not happening. Not happening. I draw the line. I'm not going above the, 100 The 100 one is like a, yeah, a slipcase keychain, lapel art pin, book soundtrack, uh, strategy booklet, um, and your name in the credits. That, that, that art book must be crazy if it's behind a $150. Cry, cry. You well, should, you should, we should, we should pay how, the, we should pay the hundred and have four player network in the credits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how long do you think it'll be before we actually see like a prototype of this game? Uh, six months. Oh my God. Longer? You it'll be a while. It's supposed, they, it's, they, they said the target date was March, March 2017. Yeah, 2017. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a ways away. I mean, that sounds about right. Considering that it's still in concept stages. Anyways, it's exciting. I'm really excited for the project. That's and, cool. The developer behind uh, Dust and Elysian Tale bought in at the 2K level. Because at the 2K level, you can design a weapon to go into Bloodstain. And so it, the primary weapon from Dust and Elysian Tale is now going to be a weapon. And That's cool. That's also great fucking news because it tells you that this is going to be an eager ass like RPG yeah. fucking Castlevania game with tons of fucking loot and weapons. And they said there's a crafting system and that enemies drop all different kinds of like items and materials and weapons and stuff. And, and, and there's going to... Man... Everybody, go to Twitter, tweet at Sword or Whip on Twitter. Sword or Whip on Twitter. Yep. Tell them that a stretch goal idea that you want are familiars. Do you remember from Symphony of the Night? The little demon, the little angel, the little sword that could spin around that when you hit level 50, you could actually equip it. Yeah, I love that sword. Familiars were so fucking cool. They would level up individually from Alucard. I want that in this fucking game. I think they weren't expecting this Kickstarter to get as high as the, it did this quickly, so they're just throwing out ideas for these shares. Because I bet they don't even know. Fucking speedrun mode. Nobody gives a shit. Let's give them a good idea. Tweet at them. Familiars. We want familiars. They'll hear you. Also, maybe do hashtag we want familiars or something. Yes. Make it a, make it a movement. Yes. Yeah. Hashtag. Familiars and Bloodstained. And make sure you Let's also be honest, hashtag guys. Bloodstained. Right. Let's right. be honest. Yeah, Let's not familiar. get ahead of ourselves. Konami could still swoop in and fuck this up. No, they can't. Yes, They've they been can. trying to fuck as much shit They're going to try and fuck up everything. Oh, did we want to talk about that? The whole Inverted PS4 Castle. thing? Yeah. Oh, with PT? Yeah. I can't. We, we, like have, we can't corroborate we that. About it. We no, can't confirm it. The, the thing that came out just like today or yesterday was that people's uh, PT was causing issues with DRM. Uh, and fucking up their other downloadable games. Like, the DRM check failed on PT, which caused their other downloadable games, like, I don't know, if you downloaded Rogue Legacy, the, the DRM check would fail on it, meaning you can't play any of your downloadable games. Well, I haven't tested it, and I'm a little scared Konami. to. I thought yeah. MGS... It wasn't MGS and HipChat earlier saying he was going to try it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's almost not affecting everybody. It's affecting yeah. some people. Well, I I'll, hope to God it's not true. I'll just fucking delete... <sighs> God. You're gonna delete PT. <laughs> You're not gonna delete PT. Well, right? I'm not gonna like give up playing games, downloadable games, my PS4 for a, a demo PS4. for a game that's never gonna come out. That, the PS4 you have now can be your PT PS4. Nick, go <laughs> fuck yourself, <laughs> Nolan. Nick, I think it'll be really out. cathartic for you if you delete PT. Just you know, let it go. You know what's unfortunate? I can't. I'll never be able to play it again without being angry. Do you know what's unfortunate? If PT cost a dollar. They wouldn't pull it down. Right. They're only pulling it down because it's free. Yep. And Konami's like, fuck all y'all. Yep. If, if they were still making money off of it, they'd leave it up there. <sighs> Those that... motherfuckers, man. Because honestly, if it cost a dollar or, you know, five bucks, and and after this game got canceled, you'd probably get even more downloads. Just to probably. S- pe- people will go see what it was all about. Pay them in pachinko balls. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> 
I'm still real bitter about that, guys. Anyways, it, it'll be that way for a while. You should stay bitter because fuck that, man. You're you're right to be angry, dude. Yeah. I'm I'm like let I it, wish I didn't care as much about Metal Gear Solid because I would have canceled that pre-order. In a let fucking it leech the life from your bones. Not the hatred. We can only assume <laughs> that it was probably not much of a game at this point. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't. Have well, been obviously, yeah. Uh, okay. Nolan, it's time for the community. Community. It's time for community. Time for community. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, in the past week, we've had two new patrons. We Ooh. have. We'd like to thank them. Uh, the first one is Zill666. Zill? Yeah. And the other one is Victor EYA with a thing over it. Three fourths <laughs> A with a thing over it. Three. A tilde? Uh, yeah, tilde over it. Tilde. R-S-S. <laughs> Kincaid, West Virginia. Yep, that's him. Uh, so thank you all for being patrons. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. I think we're appreciate planning something you. too. Patre- yeah. Patreon later uh, here. Next thing, uh, we're going to go through uh, the questions. All patrons have the ability to ask us questions that we answer most of the time. Uh, so this week's first question comes from Piosh. 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 There will always... Guys, there will always be a question from Piof until you start asking questions. So yep. there are, we have a lot of patrons. There's a question from gonna... Piof because he likes hearing his name. Probably. Piof. Piof. He gets off Piof. on it. <laughs> Say it louder, Brad. If you give us, <laughs> if you are a patron, you can leave us a question yeah. on the Patreon activity feed every week. It's easy. Yep. Uh, so his question is: We spend a lot of time dreading publishers cutting out content from games to sell as DLC. But has there been any DLC that you've been happy to purchase for a game? Hmm. Well, well, yeah. Left, left Behind. Left Behind you... is an easy one oh, to yeah. go to. <laughs> there you go. Um, the Fallout 3 DLC, mm-hmm. all of that DLC yeah. was fucking fantastic. Wow, every every single... Uh, Mothership e- e- Zeta. Mother, oh, my God. <laughs> like, like even um, New Vegas DLC. Uh, well, Old World Blues. Yeah, Old World Blues. Hey, but, yeah. like, they were fucking... Like, they made There's good plenty DLC. of DLC out there that's great. Yeah. 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 There's always that question of was this supposed to be in the final game, or not? Well, I think I think I think that's when when it comes to the question of DLC being like like skins and items and stuff like that. That's when I get kind of like pissy about it. There's also well, just I mean, some <laughs> single player content that just kind of sucks. No, mm-hmm. like listen, like skins and and stuff like that is is okay. It's kind of scummy or whatever. Batman does the shit out of that, but yeah. you don't have to fucking buy. No, that's true. You don't. You don't. But. What is, like, extra scummy is, like, think about Assassin's Creed for Black Flag. If you played multiplayer like I did, there were DLCs where it's, like, unlock everything that you unlock through the progression system for 10 bucks or something like that. Really? Yeah. Like, get all the weapons. Get all the abilities. You mean Assassin's Creed 3 multiplayer? Four. Four, four multiplayer? Black Flag? Yeah. Hell yeah, it did. Oh. It was the last one. Um, and that, that, I think that was the only one where they really got like fucking ape shit with the deal. Dude, guys, look it up. Come on. I played a shit ton of it. Um, (coughs) not saying I don't trust you. It, there was, there was a shit ton of stuff like that where it's like unlock boosters for like, 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 yeah, that's the stuff. That's that's some cell phone shit. Yeah. (laughs) Hit my mic. Oh, I don't like that either. Um, there's also like single player DLC that comes out that's half-assed or just kind of like a quick money grab mm-hmm. yeah but then there's like expand like i've actually i'm Some like this friday i'm gonna DLC. be playing the the dlc for evil within which was one of my favorite they games announced last another year. one today there's three total oh. and uh i've heard the dlc was the, the i've heard the first two episodes that are actually really good like people on twitter for weeks have been encouraging me to play it because they say it's really good and i don't know i think it all i think it all just comes down to if the price is right and it's not like super close to like if it comes out like two months three months after release like that's fine like Mm -hmm. that like that's Mm -hmm. stuff that you know maybe they knew they couldn't make it in time for release um or they just had extra stuff that they knew they could do after they launched it and they just decided to go for it that's cool but then there's stuff that you just get the feeling where it's like it's like a week after release and it's like uh Okay, that could have been in the final game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just blatant, but I don't know. DLC is fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For, I mean, for the most part. Yeah. I do remember Black Flag having multiplayer now that I think about it. Mm-hmm. Layer I, of I, the Shadow Broker. That was a really good one. Yeah. Oh, God damn yeah. That, was good. that was a good one. Fucking Mass Effect. Uh, all right. Next question Ooh. is from Kits1984. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Gentlemen, The yeah. Void, 
Is the future of immersive gaming? Question mark. What is the void? Oh, fuck. Discuss. I have no idea. What the? F- I we think should, there's a game. We called should the really void. look at these questions before the show. I think there's a game called well, I, the Void. I normally do, but then I did it like indie two game. minutes before we started today. <laughs> Which one so. was the Void? The Void is like a weird indie game. Like a we'll Void. Com- we'll come back uh, to avoid that. The void? Visions of mm-hmm. Infinite. Surprise! No one in this room has heard of that. Or is it Indiegogo? I don't know. Indiegogo. Moving oh, on, indie- our next okay, question is from Equinoxinator. Who asks, do you think that holding back information is good or bad for storytelling? An example of this could be Left 4 Dead 1, assuming 2 does not exist, where they don't really say where, why there are zombies. It's just that there are zombies and you're in danger. You know, it really depends on the story you're telling. I agree. I think, I think in something like, like Left Behind, the story that they're trying to tell, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You mm-hmm. know? It doesn't matter as much. You think about, like, if you're telling a story that has any sort of, like, mystery component to it, then obviously the whole pacing of that story <laughs> when it gets is revealed. based around mm-hmm. how much information you know at any given time. Yeah. You know? And then there are stories where it matters less, you know? Um, but for, for that one, I think I think, I think think something like that, as far as, like, like world-building issues for games like The Last of Us, where you're really only, you really only care about, like, two characters, three characters, their relationship with one another, and how they deal with all this shit. Like, that shit that they're dealing with doesn't matter as much with as how they deal with it. So you don't have to spend hours going into exposition about, like, oh, there are zombies everywhere, and that was because in Africa there was a, a lab that was experimenting with Monkeys. a virus. Honestly, yeah. like, <laughs> like, that's the problem with Resident Evil these days, is yeah. they try to explain everything. The storytelling is yeah. so like, convoluted. Who yeah. Yeah. There's What's, a there is a there's a sweet spot, and it, it's different for every story. It depends on the person as well. Uh, I think they're asking our personal opinions, but I mean, I think like Dark Souls is another one that is controversial, mm-hmm. and that a lot of the storytelling is just through item descriptions and stuff like that, and like the the actual story itself that the game tells you is very. I find that minimal. I find that whole universe far more intriguing, not knowing. The, much of anything that's, about it. Yeah. Especially that's, horror. That's Less like the Lost complex where like yeah. when you don't know anything about that world, it's super fucking interesting. And then, and then when they tell you everything, you're like, oh, mm, okay. Don't care so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's called mystery. All right, Nano on. machines are the reason for everything in exactly. Metal Gear. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, think, I think Metal Gear is another... I think Metal Gear is one of those rare instances where they try to explain everything and while a lot of it is loopy and just batshit crazy and maybe in other... In other works, it would have been gone. They would have been considered like taking it way too far with telling yeah. you everything. I don't know why it somehow still works with Metal Gear in a mm. lot of ways. Uh, Arxidus asks, "What are y'all's favorite tasty snacks?" Favorite tasty <laughs> those snacks. Those things that Nolan brought me. <laughs> oh, those those Korean things. <laughs> yeah. I forget what they're called. Yeah. Did you eat all the other ones I brought you? <laughs> They're sweet. Chris Davis yeah, would like us to inform everybody that it's his is honey roasted cashews. Yeah. No. My, my my go to is. Uh, sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. I fucking love sunflower I like, seeds. I like I like rolled golds. I thought I thought you liked uh, those blue sour punch. Sour punch. Well, I do punch like straws. the blue sour the the, the uh, blue sour punch straws. Are we talking salty snacks? Whatever snacks. The blue Tasty sour snacks. punch straws are the only good sour punch straws. Mm-hmm. They're pretty good. And I will eat them. There's I don't all. even really know what they are, but like in a lot of uh, like bar nut mixes, they'll have like these little crunchy. Like sesame sticks. spicy sticks or something. Sesame like, sticks. Yeah, sesame sticks. I, I always no, gonna... like I know what sesame sticks are. Are, are those the ones that are in like Gardetto? Like orange or something. Like the, like in Gardettos, like those ones that are kind of like crunchy. Is. You don't, you don't like Gardettos? I don't you know, know what that is. I don't know how, but I ended up getting really addicted to. Uh, you know, does anyone here know what Melba snacks are? Melba. Yeah, Melba that snacks. Sounds familiar. They're basically like they're all, they're practically flavorless crackers that you're supposed to put stuff on oh. like mm-hmm. dip and whatnot. Oh, I think um, you're talking about. But I just got addicted to eating the crackers. Mm-hmm. I love them, Body especially Christ. when they're burnt. What? what? You guys remember when? Uh, I love them. When Ritz were doing those like baked chips. Yeah. Oh, let's forget. <laughs> I'm always I'm kind of moody about my snacks. I mean, something I'll really like, but then you know I eat it and. You know, I don't have a go-to is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. just depends on my mood. You're a gastronome. You like so yeah. many things. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Twizzlers. A gastronome. No, never Twizzlers. Yeah. I love Twizzlers. I like popcorn. What's wrong with you guys? Gross. I like the sour-filled I like, Twizzlers. I like kettle corn. What? Kettle I hate great. kettle corn. What? You're no, weird. I, I hate kettle corn. You just hate fun. Uh, what, <laughs> I hate it. One of mine uh, during, Fuck kettle corn. during the holidays shirt. is peppermint bark. I really like peppermint oh, bark. Peppermint bark. Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh-huh. 
uh, all right. And there's also like my my grandma always like makes like like she always have fucking Tupperwares filled with like snacks. She'll do like chocolate covered pretzels and mm. and fucking peanut brittle and shit. S- Smiley List knows what's up. She says I love Melba toast. What up, Melba toast? That's the same thing. Melba snacks, Melba toast. It's all the same thing. What the fuck is it's, Melba? I'll bring some Melba toast next week. Okay. Ugh. I it's guess. practically flavorless. Do you we can't, need some yeah, Vegemite really... to put on it? Yeah. No, I don't put anything on it. I just eat them. All right, next question. I sit there and I watch TV and I eat Melba snacks like a... From Mick Lopa. Oh, no. Mick Lopa? Mick Lopa. Oh, I had that last Iron Brew and I drank it. <laughs> oh. I completely forgot about Nick. <laughs> Wait, what is an Iron Brew? Exactly. It was the drink we saved Nick, for you. Nick and then doesn't Brad even like it. soda. It was pretty good. What? Wait, do you like Big Red? Mm, I don't. I think I have an opinion on Big Red. Oh, what? Okay. You've never had a Big Red? Not enough to form you, an opinion well, about it. Texas, say, I don't like Big Red, and I kind of like Iron Brew. <laughs> well, you'll never know. Well, that, doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't help me at all, Crispy. All right. Uh, final question this week from Mick Lopa. Mick Lopa. Uh, Mick Lopa. We all know big boys do cry. What are some of the yeah, games that you got uh, the most emotional? <laughs> right here. Final Fantasy Ten, Last of Us, the first fucking twenty minutes. Uh, oh Jesus God, Christ. yeah, uh, yep. Yeah. That I think that must have that probably got most people. The, the if, if you don't cry or if you don't yeah. feel the urge to at least tear up a little bit, it during didn't that, get me. You you're a heartless, heartless son of a bitch. You've got, Not, you've the got, DLC did. Though. You've yeah. got like really yeah. hard like Oscar bait shields though, right? <laughs> well, so I, I my thing was I kind of fell into it at the beginning because I thought she was gonna be a bigger sarah was going to be a bigger deal and it, it's just kind of the whole like you know joel's holding her and he's like, oh baby girl oh that's fine uh, <laughs> he doesn't i mean I the opening it, it also doesn't, like it the, doesn't take much for like a movie mm-hmm. how about the end of, like i'll ball all the time but like games it doesn't happen oh, that's right often. because you don't recognize games as being a valid storytelling medium oh. one for me I'm is the opening it. to ori in the blind forest i've, I've heard that i haven't, I haven't Dude, played that yet it's it's kind of like it's like Miyazaki style sad. Oh, yeah. oh, but man. see, I, I that's rough. Yeah. But it didn't get me. I'm not. Maybe because I'm not saying like every fucking movie in the in the world does it. But you know, there are some trailers where I get <laughs> I get teary eyed, but not many games. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just because of the way like it plays out. I mean, yeah. most of them aren't cinematic enough to even like pull that off. Well, or, and a lot of the ones we've mentioned were. Like pretty cinematic, in yeah, there. cinematic like moments and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't I mean, like you playing a game and somebody dying. It was like you watching. And you have to be really attached scene. to a character. The reason the the Last of Us beginning didn't get me is but because I, I, I wasn't I, attached. I, you, to... But you can't like empathize with a guy whose daughter is dying in his arms. But that's the thing. Shot. But but again, that's so much more effective when they're characters that you spent a lot of time with. Why? Which is why by the the, Did end, the end of the of Left Behind get to you exactly because by that time yeah. you spent so much time with Ellie. You finally get it. You finally hear that story, and by the end of it, you're like, damn. Yeah. You know, and that means so much more to me. I, oh, I, also in Tales of Exilia Two, I knew you'd bring that up. I was waiting. Tales for of it. Exilia Two, that I've spent so much time in Exilia One and Exilia Two with this character that you know I spent time with these characters. It it works. Is I'll that, say it. I'll say it again. The end of Final Fantasy Ten. I, yeah, that that yes, one. Well, that me. one definitely was sad. No, mm-hmm. I, I that agree was sad. With that. I don't know if I teared up or anything. I don't know um, if I cried, but like I felt, I felt it. Yeah. No. Definitely. Um, I was gonna say, uh, oh, shit, I just had it in my lost. Lots it. of weird movies for me. <laughs> the truth is. Uh, so, so, Brad, I think the reason, like, I, I felt yeah for Sarah, in The Last of Us, was uh, I guess I don't know if you just quickly went through. I spent a lot of time as Sarah, just kind of messing around, realizing uh, I was in Austin, and you know, and all that stuff. And then maybe it's just because I can relate to her. I'm closer to her age. I think it was because it was so telling you. I mean, I knew it was gonna happen. Yeah, mm. I guess so. Yeah, no, definitely. But then also, uh, the end of Walking Dead season one mm. uh, was definitely uh, not the most. What's up? We got another question. Okay. No, we didn't. <laughs> there was a. It's it's a quick one. Okay. Cry during Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> that one was yeah. Dude, during what's her face is like up. I cried during up. Yeah. The, I didn't. Did, have I, I told like, you? I, like... Have I told y'all the up story before? No, I was I, when I used to live with Roy Nick, a few years ago, uh, it's actually more than a few years ago now, uh, like five years ago, whenever it was. We were watching Up. I had never seen Up before, 
uh, he, he, you know, when he goes home from the funeral at the very beginning of the movie and he shuts the door, yeah. as soon as he shut the door, it went to black because like the internet connection timed out or something. And I was like, well, that was a shitty fucking movie. <laughs> I thought it was over. <laughs> like, it's like his wife dies and he goes home and it's it. <laughs> you thought it was one of them shorts? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck was this? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. That was... Iron Giant. Oh. oh. Vin Diesel was the voice of the Iron Giant. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I have one more question. All right, what's your Smelly question? Smelly Jelly. When was the last time y'all threw up? Oh, like two days ago. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Uh, I remember I, I threw up once in the past 15 years. What? <laughs> Brad doesn't drink a lot. That's no, no. Well, no, yeah, right. I don't. <laughs> oh my the, god. Once in the past 15 years and a bunch before that, but it was it was when I it was summer camp? No. No, it was before that 15 years ago when I was a senior in high school. Um it was I had a horrible, horrible food poisoning at a debate tournament. God, food poisoning is the worst. And, and ever since <laughs> then, I've had like a phobia of throwing up. So that's so why I stop. have anything that could possibly make me throw up. That's I mean I. So you just don't eat food. Well, I mean, food doesn't make me throw up. Well, but I mean, I don't eat any, like any food you eat could potentially. He, he's saying isn't eat questionable food. Food poisoning is the worst because when it's coming out of both ends and you have to kind of keep turning around. Because uh-huh. oh, that's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst. Uh, oh God. Let's see. When I threw up the other day, it was in the morning, like right when I woke up, and I wasn't feeling very good. I like the day before I had been at my roommate's work, which is a bar, and they were doing like a cookout, so we were like eating food and drinking like all day basically. Yeah. And I didn't feel so great the next morning, and I felt like. It was, like, indigestion, so I had, like, a lot of that, like, stomach acid, like, bile back up. So oh, when I God. threw up, it, like, burned Ugh. a lot, like, most of the morning, and that was terrible. But normally throwing up is, like, really cathartic. Like, <laughs> Oh, no. When, you ha- <laughs> like, when, you, when you're when you feeling nauseous and you throw up, yeah, oh, it feels so it's good. It's like, oh, my God. It's, it's over. Like, it's finally over. Yeah. Because, but is it? Is so it? I, I, I remember the past three times I've thrown up because I haven't thrown up much. I can't specifically remember the last time no, I threw beca- up. No, because there was the, the most sure recent was time drinking. was, uh, I think, Bernadette's birthday maybe. We had a bunch of people over and for some I only had like seven beers, which should not make me throw up. But for some reason, maybe I, I'll, because can, can whiskey go bad? I mean, no, I feel like it would take a while, right? <laughs> I don't, no. I don't know, because I had some whiskey that I hadn't had in a long time, and I just for some reason it did not agree with me. And like the next morning, I was just so nauseous, and Burnett was like, "You have to eat something," and I, she gave me an egg, and after the first bite, bam! Just I, oh, literally, dude. I didn't swallow. Just in my the eggs were in my mouth. Touch your tongue and yeah, boom. and I was like, "Nope." Uh, time before that was Bernadette's acceptance in the pharmacy school. I'm seeing a trend here. Yeah. Uh, fuck Bernadette. I'm just kidding. I love her. Wait, was that? That was the night when we was had the Jello the, shots. The Jello. Oh. So she made Jello shots in like syringes. Oh, so man, to take the was... Jello shot, you just. Wait. That was a dangerous was night. Was I there for this? No, this is before uh, we knew. Oh. Yeah. Uh, not not like not a needle syringe. Like a. Did like anybody a... throw up that one night? No, I don't think no, so. I don't no, know. did you? No, no, no. no. And so. then the time before that That's why I stayed was drunk. December thirty first, two thousand and one, because when I was at Camp Strake in Houston, Brad knows Camp Strake. Uh, the thirtieth. Rabdar get. Yeah, Rabdar get. <laughs> uh, <laughs> slime in the ice machine. Um, so uh, the it was the last day of of summer camp or winter winter camp because it was obviously December thirtieth, and so they were like, yeah, let's let we're gonna have a big showing of Ice Age. So after dinner, we're gonna everyone's gonna go watch Ice Age at the thing, uh, and so we ate beef stew for dinner. Apparently, the beef stew wasn't good on the bus. From the the mess hall over to where they were showing the movie, kids were throwing up on the bus. And I was like, "Ah, look at these idiots. I wake up at 1 a.m. on December 31st, and I'm like, I got to fart. And you know that feeling? (laughs) (laughs) That feeling where you fart, but you stop yourself because you know it's not a fart. And you clench, and you're like, nope. And so the... the, the (laughs) (laughs) Look at Brad's face right now. It's priceless. Uh, So it was... um, (laughs) And Chris Davis says, "Oh God, a blowout!" <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't uh, mess myself. I caught it. 
And I was like, this is not going to be good. Mm. And so it was, it was, it was a Boy Scout camp. Close so the, the channel locks. <laughs> <laughs> so there's those shitty latrines, sure. which are essentially oh a wooden... Oh my God, you guys got latrines? A wood, no, like, a, a, like essentially a piece of wood with a toilet seat on it. Yeah. Like, just like a hole. And so I was like, fuck that. I know where the adults, like, restroom is. And so I ran. It was just a little farther to go to that. And just fucking both ends, having to switch back and forth. No. Because it was coming out of both. And it was Jesus horrible. Christ. For like an hour. It was horrible. December 31st. A I day was, which we're living in for 2001. Me. I was just like, nah. Like at <laughs> one in the morning. Some good beef stew. Aren't God, you glad I asked so that bad. question? How often do you eat beef stew? I don't. I try, <laughs> I'm going to name this the avoided. beef stew show. Oh, God. Holy crap. All right. That's fun. Well, yep. I think it's time to move on to Chatter of the Week. <laughs> that was <Right>? a very <laughs> long Q&A. Right? That All was, right. That was Chatter cool. of the Week. I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> uh, it's everyone's favorite part of the show. It's part of the show where we pit two chatters against each other in all that brawl of chatterness and how much beef stew they can eat. Oh, God. Hopefully it's not a lot. <laughs> Our first chatter this week is Jason Pioshed in chat. Oh, shit. Pioshed. From New York. New uh-huh. York City. Now, he didn't say city. I don't know. Well, I thought he was from, like, Scandinavia. Nope. New York. That's far uh, less shameful secret. I used to play a lot of TF2. Me too. Uh, and when they introduced uh, trading, I really got into the economy. After Max's severed head... After Max's severed head started going for exorbitant prices, people began speculating. In my speculation, I ended up pre-ordering Football Manager 2012 for $40 just for the promotional cosmetic item. I never did end up making a profit from it. Wow. Wow. Trading items. Never make that mistake again. Mm. Uh, His greatest gaming achievement... I really couldn't think of anything impressive. I was able to A rank, uh, sorry, it's not S rank, the hard campaign in Advance Wars Dual Strike, but some of those missions were too irritating to try in S rank. I'm looking at you, Pincer Strike. I think Brad knows what he's talking about. I don't remember that particular mission, but yeah, some of those missions were fucking hard. Um, Man, that's good taste. Yep, Piotr's top five games of all time. Number five, Mischief. Maker. 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 Makers. <laughs> Number four, Advance Wars. Um, um, Black, Black Sun Rising? Dual Strike. Black Hole Rising? I'm going to go with Dual Strike. Dual Strike. Number Dang three, it. Warcraft. Three. Three, Frozen three. Throne. Well, just three. Warcraft three, the Frozen Throne. Oh, okay. Isn't that just an expansion for Warcraft three? Yeah, yeah but, but those Blizzard expansions. expansions so people consider those their own separate yeah. things. Yeah. I guess they had its own campaign. The, yeah, yeah, the, like the amount of content, yeah. Yeah. Uh, number two, Persona. Four. 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 Persona golden? 4 Golden. Ah! And his number one game of all time is Dragon Age Dog Dragon Quest Origins. 9. Dragon, que- Dragon uh, Age Origins. Dragon Quest 5. Dragon Age Origins. Oh! Called that shit. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And Piosh says, Thanks for the seven years of content. I'm glad I'm no longer just a lurker. I'm glad too. There you he, go. Is, he is. He was a lurker. He's, He's really. He questions. has really crawled out of lurking yeah. lately. Yeah. He has. <laughs> uh, and this week, Pio is up against David Korzik from uh, Shadow. Pronounce it loud. Shadow Dirk in chat <laughs> from F- Shadow Dirk, Florida. <laughs> That's like, Florida. I expected it Florida? to be some like crazy place because his last name. <laughs> it's like Florida. Florida. Florida, Florida. Florida. Um, his shameful secret: the first Zelda game I ever finished was The Legend of Zelda: A Link Between Worlds for the 3DS. Mm. I wonder if that's inspired him to go back and play. I ones. played Zelda games before, At like a Wind Waker it. and A Link to the Past, but I've never finished them. I feel bad since it's such a beloved series. I wonder if that says something about how easy A Link Between Worlds was. Uh, not necessarily. <coughs> I think anybody just... could finish A Link Between Worlds. <laughs> we all awkwardly I look at Crispy. Totally could. You're right. At any time. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, Anytime I, I, want I, to. I wouldn't feel too bad about that. At least you played A Link to the Past and uh, Wind Waker, two of the, the, the really good Zelda games. I mean, you didn't finish them, but that's okay. At least you admit you're wrong. Uh, his greatest gaming achievement uh, would probably be getting over one million souls in Dark Souls without losing any from dying. 
I know it's probably not that big of a deal, but for some of these Dark Souls pros, uh, for, for some of them, but it was a big achievement for me. Dude, I know what you mean. Like, sometimes... Like, even, like, when I when I have a whole lot of souls in those games, I'm like, oh, should I spend these? Should I keep going? Like, I don't want to lose them all. Like, when you when you hit that, like, high number, it's kind of yeah. like, ugh. I don't think I've ever held a million souls consecutively. Yeah. I either get too scared and go spend them or... Or lose them. Or die. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, uh, and... Wait, this just sin? Not impressive. Dark Souls community. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow Dark's top five games of all time. Number five, Castlevania. Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night. Dawn of Sorrow. Symphony of the Night. That's just my default because the only one I've played. Symphony of the Night. Number four, Half Life. Two. 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 Number three, Final Fantasy. Oh, God, it's always Seven. one. Seven. Nine. Uh, ten. It's always the best one, guys. Eight. Shut up. Final <laughs> Fantasy, eight. Number two, Dragon. Oh, God. Quest 8. This is Dogma? No, Dragon. Dragons. Age. Origins. Yep, Damn, that was on both lists. It's definitely it not three, because that was the <laughs> most hyped and gone out yeah. of everyone's mind. It was kind of crazy how fast it disappeared. How <laughs> fast everyone realized that? I don't think I'm ever going to play that game. Oh, come on. You, you well, should... I mean... I... When am I going to go back to That's it? That's true. I haven't finished it. And no, I really want to finish it. There's nothing anybody is telling me that makes me think I should it definitely experience that. It was on my top ten that. list. Well, the thing is, Nick, here's the thing. It's a good game. But compared to the other games in the series, it's kind of forgettable. It's just not going to stick with you. I played it for like... That does not make me want to go play I it. I played it for like at least 60-something hours. I don't regret any of that time. It's like the movie that you enjoy while you're watching it, and then when you step out of the theater, you're like, huh... But if you watch it again, <laughs> okay. you're like, oh, yeah. All right. It's, it, it's like Remember Me, But You Forgot oh. to remember it. Uh, and anyway, uh, Shadow Dark's number one game of all time is Metal Gear Solid, solid. 3. Solid? Uh, solid. Metal Gear Solid. Metal solid. Gear Solid 3. Once again, we have Pioshft. <laughs> Very similar... Those top five games were Mischief Makers, Advance Wars, Dual Strike, Warcraft 3, The Frozen Throne, Persona 4 Golden, and Dragon Age Origins up against Shadow Dark, who is Symphony of the Night, Half-Life 2, Final Fantasy 8, Dragon Age Origins, and Metal Gear Solid 3. That's a good list, I'm going to go with Shadow Dark. I think he has... A, I, th I like his list. <sighs> yeah. I like I'm... it. I like. I feel like we're kind of on par there with with our... You know, he seems like he's kind of at a moderate skill level with, with Dark Souls. That's kind of how I'm feeling about Bloodborne. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, like Advance Wars. Advance Wars. That is and why P.O.F. gets my vote. Well, that, because and, that's a great and series. And Warcraft 3 was awesome. It was Warcraft great. 3 Frozen Throne was great. If you like that's RTS. a good list. I do personally think that, uh, who was the second guy? Shadow, Shadow Dark. Dark. Shadow Dark's list aligns more personally with my own, so I think I'm just going to have to... Oh, really? Because he put Symphony of the Night on this? Yeah, because he put Symphony of the Night on there, which is my okay. favorite game of all time. I've played it so many times. I've it could be. i put so many hours into it that game. It could be. You just don't know. Oh, man, you know, I don't finish games very often, but that one... <laughs> um, one of these days, you'll realize... Because of the top done. five, I'm also going to have to go with Shadow Dark. No. So it's a tie. No? No. Oh, wait. Shadow Dark one. Shadow Dark. Oh, Sweet. So congratulations. I just can't count. Yep. Uh, Shadow Dark, you're this week's Chatter of the Week. You have win the one. Congratulations. I don't even know what that means. If you would like to be Chatter of the win. Week. No, win the one. Uh, if you would like to be Chatter of the Week, all you have to do is go to fourplayernetwork.com. There's a big box that says Chatter of the Week. Just click on that, Take enter that. in your beef stew, and you too could be Chatter of the Week. <laughs> you want a big heaping bowl of, of beef stew. What are we watching? What What is this? No, take this off the screen. Oh, yeah. GTA mods. Oh. Oh, it's a cat that shoots fire. And it's a cat, so Chris Davis had to immediately bring it to our attention. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nolan. It's time to wrap You're up welcome. the show. The show's gone a little long, so let's try and keep our four-player minutes to around a minute. We're going to say our hype, our sweat, our thank you, and our fuck you of the week. Brad's going to start us off. Go, Brad. My hype is, of course, for The Witcher 3. The review embargo's lifted. Hey. Sounds like the game's pretty goddamn good. Yeah, as of before the show, it was at 92. Uh, it's huge. I'm going to explore. Series any difference? I can't fucking wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Fuck my... We'll say my fuck you. My sweat goes to uh, Fire Emblem If, or whatever they're calling it, the yeah. one for the 3DS. Uh, they announced today that the, that the durability system is gone. 
Like, Fire Emblem has always had, like, weapons that only have a certain amount of uses, which yeah, kind yeah. of played mm -hmm. into the economy, you know? You might save up for, like, the killer axe, which has a really high critical hit chance rate, but, you know, you only have one of those, use so, so you use it sparingly, yeah. or, or when, like when... Glass weapons that you can only use a couple yeah, times, like but like, really, really powerful awesome. weapons that yeah. you don't want to use every time that you pull out when you have to, you know? Yeah. And if, if they're going to make remove that system they got to really rebalance and rework how that system and the economy works i'm i'm, I'm wondering how they're going to do it it seems strange to me mm -hmm. but um uh, <laughs> my uh my thank you definitely goes to urban hitman for for gifting me exanima i'll definitely be playing some more of that i'm kind of excited about it i'm definitely going to be following the updates i like that kind of sword combat it's actually what drew me to like mountain blade i i like re very physical precise sword combat you don't see that very often and my fuck you of course goes to konami fucking suck it konami you dumb piece of shits always acting like this type of game wouldn't sell wouldn't build interest <laughs> you know you just had to actually give Ega some fucking you know money what the worst and promote the fucking thing, thing. so fuck you konami suck a dick you know what the worst part of this whole konami debacle is I saw this morning the fucking konami reported a profit what the? Cause, cause they're not even yeah. a game company Well, that's the thing. Anymore. They've always made more money. It's just and like, their other and their I other means see them. Of, of profit. Oh, yeah. God, it's just... they're all they're in the gambling business. Yeah, gambling. They will always make. Yet a profit. they won't take a gamble on a video game. Well, they're businessmen. Yeah, they're businessmen. They know yeah, how so to make they money. Just la fucking. They're they're laughing at you right now, Nick. Fucking. They're laughing. Hate. They're rolling at pachinko balls and <laughs> laughing at you. With their salt shakers. I'm, and... I'm going to smash any pachinko <laughs> machine I see in the future. That's uh, a good baseball bat. All right. Uh, it's time for me? No. Yes, it's your turn. Dude, I hope they make a Silent Hill pachinko machine. Oh. Go to, fuck <laughs> just, just to fuck you to everyone. They do that all the they time. They probably would. They do that all they the time. Contra, Did you see someone they made a Contra a, Someone machine. took an image of like a, of a row of people playing a pachinko I machine, and, yeah. it said, and it said, they took the PT logo, and they split it up, and it said, pachinko time. Yeah. And I was like, God, <laughs> fucking. Uh, all right, uh, my four player ministers now. My hype. As for Rebel uh, Le uh, Galaxy, uh, I'm definitely going to play more of that this week. Uh, I really enjoyed the time I spent with it, and I want to spend more time. I kind of want to be a rebel. Like, I want to start blowing people up and, like, stealing shit. Well, it's called Rebel Galaxy. That's true. I want to start doing that. I just don't they are kind of enforcing that. My sweat is for State of Decay Year One Survival Edition. I got a copy of that, mm -hmm. and I really want to play it, but I probably shouldn't. Uh-oh. You'll but get addicted. I know. Uh -oh. That's the thing. And, like, I was trying to... I'm trying to finish Bloodborne before Witcher comes out, and I finished the, the boss I was stuck on in the Chalice Dungeon, but now I'm stuck on the next boss. And like, oh, and then my other hype is Witcher 3 comes out next week, and I really want to play it. Uh, Are you okay? Yes, we do. No. <laughs> oh. He's going to have a blowout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, uh, this is the blowout show. Clench. And then my thank you goes to Iga for, uh, you know, f finally stepping up. Uh, it's not, I know he's wanted to, uh, but this Kickstarter, which clearly... I, I, they did mention they're like, oh, we hope we get you know five hundred thousand, and you know when they I, they when they hit it, he was off camera, but then he came back on and he was he looked so fucking happy, he looked so happy. Yeah, there is a really aside. There's a really funny moment he did with with Double Fine. He did a dev plays. Yeah, where he played through. Uh, well, it was it was somebody who was from Double Fine who was like that was her favorite game. So he was on. Asking her and Ben Judd questions, uh, Ega and Ben Judd questions about the game as she played it, and um, she wasn't too good at it. But I mean, it's her favorite game. But at some, you could see Ega like getting really frustrated, and at one point he's he's like, "Let me do it, let me do it," and then he was starting to struggling. It was funny. <laughs> it, it was when you get to the hey, wall and there was this? like that big sword dude, yeah. and he goes like, "You can actually beat him now. You could do it. You could do it." And she kept trying and dying. He's like, "Let me try, let me try," and then he couldn't do it Wait, either. <laughs> what, what game is this? Symphony of the Night. He Symphony, played, oh. They they played Symphony of the Night for for two hours and they talked about it. And it, it that that's also a really cool video. That one came out like several days ago. I recommend uh, watching that. I learned stuff about Symphony of the Night that I I did never, never even knew from watching that video. From watching that, because because they were in that part where you know the the little like ghosts they call them ghosts, but those little Medusa head things. Not or? not the Medusa heads, but the little like they look like little like 
they're not skulls that are on fire, but they just start oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. they look like little fossils or something. They materialize and they just start coming towards you. Yeah. You could totally like pull out your shield and just push them back. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. That's a good game. Crazy. He, he's a backseat gamer, though. Oh, he yeah. kept saying, use your shield. Use your shield. No, no, no. Use your shield. <laughs> I never used the shield that much. <laughs> it's cool to see that it has a lot of uses. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Crispy. All right. My hype is also for Witcher 3 for reasons, because it looks like it's going to be great. Um, my sweat is for the black glove. I mean, it's probably just dead. We'll probably never see it, but, I mean, maybe, maybe somebody will come along. They, they had said that the reason why they were shelving it was because they couldn't find a publisher. They couldn't find that, quote, glass slipper situation, like the perfect yeah. fit for their game. Maybe an opportunity like that will present itself in the future and they'll decide to come back to it, but I don't know. My fuck you for the week goes to Ubisoft for pretty much officially putting the final nail in the AC competitive multiplayer coffin because they're never going to go back and do that again. Probably and that's not. a fucking shame. Uh, but I can go ahead and thank them for making that Gotham by Gaslight game that we all got excited about a couple years ago, if you remember that. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my four-player minute. My fuck you of the week goes to Crispy. <laughs> uh, just kidding. My fuck you of the week actually goes to Konami for obvious reasons. I'm going to be very bitter. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, from here on out to at least, at least the end of the year, my fuck you of the week is going to be to Konami hmm. um, for Silent Hills. Straight up, Silent Hills. Fuck you, Konami. You're a fucking asshole. You've killed Castlevania. You've killed Silent Hill. You've pretty much put the nail in the coffin on Metal Gear Solid at this point, right? Sui Koden? Uh, sure. By the th- way... We'll go ahead and throw Suka down. G- game Trailers did a top ten video game words that people don't know how to say mm-hmm. properly. And or that su- no one can agree on it, and Suka Den was on the list. <laughs> nice. Nice. Hey. Um, <clears throat> my hype? It's Sui Koden. My hype goes to The Witcher 3. It comes out next week. We've been we've been very excited about it since we saw it at E three a few years ago. Uh, it's oh, exciting God. to finally get our hands on it. CD Projekt Red. Also, you know, it's exciting in the fact that we'll finally get to play The Witcher three. But at the same time, that also means maybe we'll start seeing uh, Cyberpunk soon because Witcher three is like what C- CD Projekt Red always has a sh- it does hit it before E three. They yeah. always have a, a presence at E three, and they always have a special room where they show yep. off games and stuff. They're not going to be showing The Witcher three this year. No. Nope. What are they going to have? Could be Cyberpunk. That's exciting. Um, my sweat goes to uh, Bloodborne because I want to finish it before uh, before Witcher three hits next week. Um, I'm making really good progress. I just don't I don't have a feel yet for whether or not I'll be able to finish it. Where are you? Um, I just beat the uh, the Born. Mm-hmm. Is that what he's called? Yeah. The One uh, Reborn? Yeah, mm-hmm. The One Reborn. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a surprisingly I, easy break. Dude, I beat him on my first or uh, first try. Yeah. I wait, used... wait. Dark Souls community is not impressed. <laughs> that, uh, uh, which is... You should have beat him on your that's, zero. That's try. my go-to farming boss fight because it's yeah. so fucking easy. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm making good progress. I'm hoping I can maybe finish it up over the weekend before Witcher 3 comes out. I just want to get to the point where... I finish the main story and the credits roll, and then I'll feel okay moving on to The Witcher 3. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go do some Chalice Dungeons. And uh, my thank you of the week goes to uh, Kickstarter and Koji Igarashi for not only doing a Kickstarter and bringing back a, uh, or, you know, doing a, a proper follow up to a classic game, but at the same time, making a Kickstarter really fun. Like, yeah. that whole that video was awesome. Their stretch goals are handled really well. The stream these was achieve, awesome. The stream is, was an awesome way of promoting it. Mm-hmm. The trophies or the achievements that, that Nolan talked about earlier sound really cool. Like, it's just getting people really, really excited about the project. And I can't even imagine wh- how much money they're going to have at the end of 30 more days. Yep. It's going to be ridiculous. So, that's really exciting. Anyways, that's my four-player minute. Um, and that's the show. Uh, before we wrap up, one last reminder, this Saturday, Sunday, May 16th and 17th, we're doing a 24-hour broadcast from 12 p.m. to 12 p.m. in support of Operation Supply Drop. So come hang out. We'll be playing uh, cooperative games. We're doing a dual stream. We're doing communi- games with the community. And we'll be doing a six-hour Fatal Frame broadcast from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, that's Central Standard Time on 4pp.tv. And we won't so be come hang out with us. Way. Maybe play some games with us. Maybe donate some money to help support a really good cause. It should be a lot of fun. Um, and I think that's it, guys. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll be back next week, same time, same place, for another podcast. 
fourplayernetwork.com is, of course, the website where you can find us. And you can, of course, watch us broadcast games every single night on 4pp.tv. Thanks for listening. Yay! Bye. 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 Bye.